This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. The Citrus Bowl in Orlando. For decades, it's been synonymous with big events in college football. Today, the seventh annual MEAC Swag Challenge kicks off with traditional powers Bethune Cookman and Prairie View AM. Just another hot and muggy day here in Central Florida, site of the 7th Annual MEAC Swag Challenge presented by Disney. The fans are ready, the fans are ready. So too are Prairie View A&M and Bethune-Cookman. Hi folks, thanks for joining us. Mike Morgan alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. And we're just like you, excited about week one of college football. And one of the things we love about it is the great interconference matchups. That's what we've got today, Jay. A lot of bragging rights on the line and a big game for the big picture as well. What started out as just a friendly rivalry amongst the conferences has really intensified into bragging rights for the whole season. The MEAC conference has come in and jumped out to a 4-2 advantage in this series, but the SWAC has that SWAC pride. Everybody's watching. Prairie View's representing the SWAT and the pride of the MEAC Conference, Bethune Cook. Well, last year, both these teams lit up the scoreboard. Offense was the calling card. Today could be different. Defense might be the key to victory. And we've got a great matchup on the perimeter. One of the top defensive backs in the country and a big time wideout going up against them. Yeah, the defensive back is Moses Ellis from Prairie View AM. He had eight interceptions a season ago, which led all FCS football. Eddie Poole's a transfer from Rutgers University for Bethune-Cookman. He had eight touchdowns a year ago. But look at the size differential. Eddie Poole, six feet, four inches, almost 200 pounds, taking on Moses Ellis, who comes in at a scrappy five feet, nine inches, 175 pounds. Pure heart and determination. Both these guys have NFL futures in their, within their grasp. Prairie View has won the toss. The Panthers will get the football first. A great crowd here today at the Citrus Bowl, site of so many historic football games over the years. These two teams have never met, which is somewhat surprising when you think about it. They've been playing football for about a century. Finally, they get to meet, and obviously a ton of bragging rights on the line. And as you heard mentioned by our own Jay Walker, this is big in order to get off to a good start for both these teams. A lot of confidence on the line as well. Prairie View A&M from the SWAC, Bethune Cookman from the MEAC, a terrific atmosphere here at the Citrus Bowl. These teams have been enjoying life at Disney the last couple of days. Some great events leading up to this ball game, and now we finally get to kick it off. As toe meets leather, Jermaine Waddy is back to receive, and instead it'll be fielded by one of the upmen just inside the 20. The Prairie View Panthers coming off a 7-4 season. As you take a look at the starting quarterback, that's Jonathan Trost. He's out of Pasadena, California. He actually played a couple of games last year. He started for Prairie View, and he led the Panthers to a 1-1 one one record before suffering a season-ending injury. Both these teams a little bit raw at the quarterback spot and at the skilled positions as well. Gruber the back. They fake it to him, swing it out in the flat. A little razzle-dazzle on the opening play. And all kinds of contact downfield. There'll be a penalty flag on that one. Pass incomplete. Final play. DJ Howard was on the coverage, and it looked like he got in there and interfered. Pass interference. Defense, number 29, 15 yards, first down. So how about that, Jay Walker? Prairie View with a little gadget play to start things off. Yeah, they come out with the razzle-dazzle, make you think it's a wide receiver screen on the right side, but they're going to do the double pass, and that's an interception that Howard should have had. But you saw clearly here, look at all the contact. The whole time, the wide receiver is running down the field, just a body draped on them, too physical. That's an easy call for the officials. First down for Prairie View A&M. Ball at the 32-yard line. Panthers. To the ground game, nothing doing. Popped and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It was Groover on the carry, a loss of one. 
And that's going to be one of the matchups we've got to watch early on. Prairie View A&M wants to try and control the line of skimmage, scrimmage, but they have not had the success in doing that in years past. They've relied on the pass. One thing about the MEAC Conference, traditionally, they've been a little bit stronger in the trenches for the SWAC boys. On second and long, little swing pass complete to Spencer Nelson, and Nelson weaving his way through traffic past midfield and into Bethune-Cookman territory. Beautiful play by the redshirt junior out of Jonesboro, Georgia, who scampers 26 yards. Spencer Nelson is the returning wide receiver from a season ago. He's got the most receptions on this wide receiver core that was decimated by graduation. He's got to step up to the challenge. You won't get a chance to catch your breath between plays. They run a hurry up, no huddle at Prairie View. Very often they'll snap it with about 30 seconds left on the play clock. Back to the ground game and a good hole along the right side. It's Groover again on the carry. He picks up nine. Let's take a look at today's U.S. Army impact players. Jay, who should we watch out for? Well, I mean, obviously with Prairie View, you've got to get everybody involved. Moses Ellis, their big play defensive back, he's got to have Eddie Poole's number. And you saw Spencer Nelson right there, 25 receptions. He's the most seasoned wide receiver on this Prairie View staff, on this Prairie View football club. He's got to come up with big plays today. Second down in the yard. That's a lateral. That's a fumble. That's behind the line of scrimmage. Loose football. And luckily for the Panthers, it goes out of bounds. That could have been a huge turnover right there. What a missed opportunity for Bethune-Cookman. Had they just fallen on that ball, they would have gotten it right there with great field position. Instead, you're going to see the defender come up and try and actually scoop up this ball and run with it for a touchdown. You want him to be aggressive, but if he falls on that, that's a big play for the defense there. And look at the swarming defense by Bethune-Cookman. Bodies all over the place. And, of course, that was Reggie Sandilands, one of the all-conference linebackers for Bethune-Cookman. We should point out there will be instant replay in this game. That is something that the MEAC and SWAC lobbied for. They wanted to make sure that they had it for this event. And you'll have plays reviewed for much of the day. Could be, could be a factor in this game. No question about it as you take a look at the head coaches for both squads. Watching this last play, Jay, this is on the throw, is it not? I mean, it, it looks like it's behind Spencer Nelson. Yeah, very tough throw for Nelson to come up with. And that was just a poorly thrown pass there by Trost. You've got to put that ball in front of him. But it was great defense there to make Nelson take his eye off the football, forcing that what could be a fumble slash lateral. And take, looks, take a look where he is. You see Trost there on that white line right there. Where is this ball actually caught? And keep in mind, if it goes sideways, that's just like having a lateral. So it doesn't have to be necessarily thrown behind the intended target. But a sideways pass is considered a lateral. It's going to be pretty tough to mm. overturn that. That looks like that's a lateral all the way. Sideways pass. But then when you see it, though, you think about it again. If it's sideways and... You know, I, I believe that they're going to reverse this call, though. You know, the more you take a look at it, you know, was it clear enough? Was he clearly throwing the ball behind the wide receiver? It doesn't look like it. Well, the, the line of demarcation is the 45, and that's where Trost throws it, and it looks like Nelson touches the ball right around the 45. So a very tough call. Already a little bit of controversy here in the MEAC Swag Challenge. There you see another look. I mean, from that angle, it's it's right around the line where he threw it, which is actually the 40. They are taking a long look at this play. Obviously, a big one either way. If it's an incomplete pass and you, you move the ball forward, you've got great position again. The ruling on the field is reverse. It is an incomplete pass. It will be third and one at the 34. Three, please reset the game clock to 13-31. Well, that's a huge call. Well, that's pretty good use of the, of the replay right there. You know, obviously, Coach Jenkins wishes he were in favor of the battlefield position, but I think the telling thing was, although the 40-yard line looked like the line where the quarterback was, technically his foot was probably somewhere around the 41-yard line, putting him about a yard behind, and I think that's why they overruled that. Brian Jenkins, just 40 years old in his second year as the head coach of Bethune-Cookman. Last year, a historic season. They won the MEAC 
And they made it to the playoffs. Third down and less than a yard. And it looked like motion before the snap. You had the back Waddy leaning in. Both start. Offense. Number 22. Five yards. Still third down. And that is Jermaine Waddy. And there's Heisman Northern. First year head coach for Prairie View, whose younger brother, you might recall, a former LSU Tiger, played in the NFL for several years. He's actually on the staff. He helps out the defensive line, strength and conditioning coach. And Heisman Northern got some help as well from a familiar face with Bethune Cookman. More on that in a moment. First, another swing pass out in the flat to Waddy. And Waddy racing toward the corner near the marker, but shy of a first down. When you talk about Heisman Northern taking over this Prairie View program from the departed Henry Frazier, who's now at North Carolina Central. But this is one of the few instances I've seen where that coach in waiting has actually worked. You know, Northern was the coach in waiting at Prairie View. And when Frazier left, they already knew who they had on the staff. No need for a search committee. And Heisman Northern is just trying to keep this Prairie View program going in the same direction that Henry Frazier. Panthers going for it on fourth down and two. Left side. Burrowing his way, but well short. Jermaine Waddy could not push the pile, and Bethune Cookman holds up on defense. They'll take over on downs. I think what surprises many of the SWAC teams, not only the athleticism of Bethune Cookman, but they're a very strong team. They really hit that weight room. So I don't think Prairie View's got the ability just to pound them. Look at that. Look at all the penetration behind the line of scrimmage. There was a small hole there, but once the running back slipped on that cut, no chance of getting picking up that first down. Well, a big stop by the Wildcats defense. And this has been a mystery throughout the week, but we finally have landed on a starting quarterback by the name of Jamar Robinson, who's a senior out of Charlotte, a transfer from the University of Maryland. Jackson, the back behind him. On play action. And nothing doing. That play strung out. On the near sideline, good pursuit Robinson's by the Prairie View defense. Maybe a yard, it'll be second and long. And let's talk about the quarterback, Jamar Robinson, playing for Bethune Cookman. Now, this is a young man that started a couple games while he was at the University of Maryland, but with the success of Danny O'Brien emerging at Maryland, he needed a place to play. So he was highly sought after after most schools within the MEAC conference. Bethune Cookman won that recruiting battle, and now he's starting here the first game of the year. On second and long. Firing through the hole up the middle. That's Jackson, the redshirt sophomore out of Jacksonville. Dwayne Chappell brings him down. Isidore Jackson's that power back they've had. For years, Bethune Cookman ran what they used to call the Wyatt Cat offense, which was a little bit of an option. They had that great A back that could dive and get you those two or three yards at will. But now they've kind of opened it up a little bit. Now they're more of a pass first, run second type of offensive scheme. On third down and four to the air. Complete. First down yardage, that's Eddie Poole, the man we talked about in the open. A great matchup that we're going to see between Poole Robinson's and Moses Ellis Robinson. and the rest of that great Prairie View secondary. Yeah, you know, too much cushion there. If you've got third and five yard, third and five, as a defensive back, you can't stand seven yards off. Look at that big cushion there. All he does is just run five yards, turn around the first down marker, and pick up the first down. I think that's Terrence Mitchell, the freshman quarterback for Prairie View A&M, showing their respect to Eddie Poole early on. Eight yards gives Bethune Cookman a first down. Now a little swing pass and a plowing hit by 32 Jackson, who only goes 5'10, 190. But this is a bruising blow that he provides on the Prairie View defense. You're going to see Jackson recognize the lane to run, but coming in the field is Brian Medlock, the safety. And oh, what a collision! Brian Medlock going in reverse. And the Wildcats are on the move. It's first and 10 from the 37. Robinson. Robinson cuts back 25 and an ankle tackle at the 23. Otherwise, he might still be running. Terrence Mitchell trips him up after a 16 yard game. Great decision by Robinson of pulling that ball out of the stomach of the running back. The defensive end dives with him. Nobody's there to keep the quarterback in the pocket. If a quarterback breaks contain, big yardage to be had. And Robinson showing 
He can be nifty on his feet as well and pick it up the first down. Great block on that play by Keith Stroud, the receiver, to help spring him free. On first and ten. And off right side. Jackson gobbles up a couple. Ryan Love brings them down. Impact players for Bethune, Cookman, and a couple of good ones both on offense and defense, Jay. We've seen Eddie Poole already within this drive. We talked about his size. We know what he can do. But Ryan Lewis is the real glue of this football team. The MEAC preseason defensive player of the year. He plays inside linebacker. He's a stud on defense. Second down and nine for Robinson. Scans, fires, hits his target, and down to about the 10 yard line. That should be close to first down yardage. That is number 88, Patrick Harris. Good job by the offensive line for Bethune Cookman. We saw Robinson had plenty of time to go through all of his progressions. The pass was actually thrown underneath to the third read on his progression. You can only get to that third read if you've got an offensive line that's giving you plenty of time to throw the football. Bethune Cookman was outstanding in the red zone last year. Robinson. He's got an alley left side. Lunges to the end zone. Touchdown. Wildcats. Ten yards for Jamar Robinson, the senior quarterback who looked awfully good on that drive. <laughs> How about that for your first drive as the starting quarterback of the Bethune Cookman offense? Robinson, great decision here. Pull the ball out the stomach, get around to the edge, then it becomes a foot race, and he shows the wherewithal to extend that ball within the pylon for the touchdown. Extra point is up and good for Hurd. And just like that, Bethune Cookman has the early lead. Seven to nothing thanks to Jamar Robinson. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. The Welcome 2011 MEAC SWAC Challenge is presented by Walt Disney World Resort. Visit MyDisneyDiscovery.com and uncover a world of grown-up and family fun you never imagined. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. A lot of great things surrounding this event. Coaches, student-athletes, staff, and official travel parties joining sponsors for a banquet at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Banquet MC by ESPN's Jay Harris and included speeches by the head coaches, conference commissioners, as well as a keynote speech by Robert Porsche. Jared Payton, the son of Walter, presenting the annual Walter Payton Achievement Award. Winners this year, Raheem Cardwell from Prairie View and Gene Fainer from Bethune-Cookman. They do a tremendous job putting on this event, and really, Jay, it's, it's not just about the four quarters on the field. It's the couple of days leading up to the big ball game. Yeah, I mean, this atmosphere is very reminiscent of a bowl game, you know, for the for the participants in this one. They get to go to the amusement park, you know, ride the rides, have a good time, give motivational speeches. They get in here a day early, which is good. So this is really a fantastic experience, and it's growing throughout the years to become one of the must-be-invited-to events. I mean, if you're a team out there, we go around the country, they're asking, hey, what do we have to do to get in the Miami Black <laughs> Challenge? Uh, both these teams, I guess, were on the proverbial waiting list, but they got in for the first time, and it's the first time they've ever met one another, so a lot of bragging rights for this ball game today and a very impressive opening drive for Bethune Cookman. Moses Ellis, one of the most dangerous return men, will get a chance to feel this one at the eight. I'd say that's going to be Wadi. And he'll get to the 27 yard line. Scoring drive, eight plays, 64 yards, three minutes and five seconds off the clock, and Robinson. Owning that drive, 4 of 4 in the air and two big rushes. If you're going to play team defense, you've got to get your man to man zone. This is the freshman linebacker, Jerome Howard, for Prairie View AM. His responsibility don't let anything get outside of you. He peeks in the backfield. Robinson recognizes that, takes off around the edge, gets in for the easy touchdown scamper. Freshman mistake early in this game by Jerome Howard, the starting outside linebacker. So, how does Prairie View respond? Trost. Here's back fires and throws high. 
right through the hands of Spencer Nelson. He's been a little bit inaccurate on some throws. Yeah, the Trost has got to settle down a little bit. You know, for the previous three years, Prairie View A&M was led by K.J. Black, who was an all-conference performer for them. Trost is stepping up. He's a junior college transfer. This is his senior season, his opportunity to shine. But you can tell early in the contest, he's got some jitters. He's been inaccurate with his throws. They go four wide on second and ten. Plenty of time for Trost. Cox and fires over the middle. Dangerous pass. Deflected and intercepted at midfield. Terrific play by the Bethune-Cookman secondary. That is Jarkevis Fields, the sophomore out of Sanford, Florida. Gene Fainer knocked it up in the air. One thing that Bethune-Cookman is notorious for is having speed in their secondary. This is a school that produces NFL defensive backs. And you'll see here, Trost is going to lock in on this wide receiver. And watch the three Wildcat defenders break on the football. And good catch there by Fields to come down with that interception. Keep it off the turf. Good job. A tough start for Prairie View A&M offensively. Out on downs in the turnover, and now a big play here on first and ten as Preston Cleckley gobbles up first down yardage. Well, we talked about the season that Bethune Cookman had a year ago in their dream season. Well, if you lead the nation in turnover margin out of 117 teams, they were number one in the country with a plus 27 turnover margin. What does that mean? They take the ball from you, they don't give it to you, and it equates to W's. On the, on the win column. Jay, in years of doing football at different levels, I've never seen a team with that ratio. That is ridiculous. Plus 27 on play action. Again, an open target. Downfield, a first down before two penalty flags fly from behind the play. Maurice Francois on the grab. It'll go for 16 if it stands. Francois is a converted quarterback now playing wide receiver for the Wildcats. Pass on the Number two, 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Well, you hate to see that. That was not on Francois. That was on Preston Cleckley away from the ball. You know, we, we talked about getting wide receivers open. This is away from the ball. You're exactly right. And kind of just blocking downfield. They just got engaged into a good old-fashioned shoving match. It was almost a fight. Very fortunate it was called to pass interference as opposed to what it should have been called for. You know, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. They were actually fighting and it turned into a pass interference call. It was closer to a right hook than a, <laughs> than a pass interference. Things getting very chippy early on in this ball game. No love lost between any teams and the MEAC and the SWAC. And that backs them up. First down and 25. And now a delay of game, so five more yards. Offense, number six, five yards, still first down. What a missed chance for the Phil Cookman. You get the turnover, you get good field position, then you come out and get consecutive penalties. So instead of looking at getting the first down, the possibly getting field goal range immediately, now, they're looking at first and 30, and the odds of converting first and 30 are pretty slim. You saw Brian Jenkins last year's MEAC Coach of the Year. A little bit frustrated with the last two plays. First down and 30. They need the 30 of Prairie View. Razzle Dazzle Cleckley has it. Wesley racing to the corner. And dives out of bounds at midfield. Preston Cleckley, a sophomore wideout from Delray Beach. He's been an unexpected surprise for this offense, trying to fill that void left by Javon Reams, who was such a weapon for this squad a year ago. Well, you see Cleckley here showing you some speed to get to the outside, getting outside around the perimeter. And this time you see the freshman linebacker again, once again. That's Jerome Howard out of position, playing that outside linebacker spot, allowing Luckily to see daylight on the outside. On second and ten, they set the screen up nicely. Look at the daylight. Out to the 35, Rodney Scott, the transfer from Ole Miss. 15 yards on that pickup. Well, Monday night on ESPN, it's an ACC football battle as Lamar Miller and Miami take on Danny O'Brien in Maryland. Will Al Golden or Randy Edsel get the win in their ACC debut college football primetime? as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week on ESPN Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time.
Third down and seven. Robinson. And that one wide of the mark and high intended for Eddie Poole. Poole was there. They had the matchup that they wanted. Poole once again going against the freshman defensive back in Terrence Mitchell. Mitchell showing too much cushion, eight yards off. But had Poole not lost his footing, he would have easily picked up the first down. Look at that size there. Six feet, four inches, can run, jump and catch. He's a big play receiver. Kowalski, the punter, going to rugby style it. Bounces at the 15. No return here for Ellis. As a half a dozen of Wildcats surround it at the nine. 27 yard punt, no return. Seven to nothing, our score as the bands rocking and rolling here at the Citrus Bowl. Some of the many great events surrounding this ball game. Bethune Cookman out to an early seven to nothing lead here at the BX Swag Challenge with Jay Walker. I'm Mike Morgan, Prairie View with the football. And a lot of history. You got to go back a few decades, but look at that. Five black college national championships in the 50s and 60s, all those SWAC championships. Then they went on a 45 year drought before winning the SWAC in 2009. And, and obviously, Jay, they're hoping to sustain that level of success. I mean, you know, that was something where, I mean, many people would just know Prairie View from once upon a time having the longest losing streak in the country. But to take that program and uh, what hit the job Henry Frazier did was getting them to respectability and then winning an outright SWAC championship in 2009 has the Prairie View alum across the country very excited about the direction of this football program. A couple yards for Gruber up the middle. Obviously, Prairie View struggling offensively early on. What do we need to see the Panthers do to turn this thing around? The, the, well, Trost, I mean, you're looking at him. Trost has to settle down. We've seen open wide receivers that he's been unable to get the football to. Then he also forced the ball into coverage. You know, if you're going to win the college football game, you've got to have good quarterback play. And right now, Prairie View A&M is not getting good quarterback play. Trost a little shaky early on. He actually started the first two games of the season last year before an injury. Nice job turning the corner and picking up some yards by Ladarie Gruber, the sophomore from Norfolk, Virginia. Nine yards on that carry. Good job of getting outside. He's showing you some speed. One thing that's very difficult to do is to outrun the Bethune-Cookman defense. They've got team speed all over the place, but he gives you a nice move to the outside, turns on the speed, and almost and does pick up the first down for the Panthers. Out of the gun, Trost. Draw play up the middle. And not much doing there. Maybe a couple he squeezed out an extra yard there at the tail end. Look at all those gold jerseys surrounding the football. That's what they like to do. And you know, we talked about Trost. Going through some growing pains right now. Well, this is a new offensive system for them. One of the big stories of the offseason for Prairie View was not only did the head coach uh, leave, Henry Frazier went to North Carolina Central, but they've got a new offensive coordinator, Mark Orlando, who a year ago was the offensive coordinator at Bethune Cookman. That ball nowhere near anybody in a gray jersey. I guess you could call DeAndre Cooper the intended target, but clearly they were not on the same page. Yeah, new quarterback, new running backs new system the one thing they do have in terms of stability they've got a veteran offensive line a number of big time linemen coming back from last season but right now it looks like this offense is still trying to get in sync this is third down and seven over the middle and way off the mark open receiver another wide receiver that was open and Trost just missed him some miss mixed communication there it seemed like the wide receiver was settling in the hole that's Greg Thurman he was going by and Thurman threw it behind him. The uh, butter get it out on the field. Chris Barrett, the redshirt freshman, getting ready to punt it away. Patrick Harris will have no chance at a return as this one rolls out of bounds, but a penalty flag right around where he kicked it. This might be a roughing the punter penalty. Bring it to the kicker on the defense. 
from 89, five yards, still fourth down. And that is a, an important distinction, running, not roughing it to the kicker. And you take a look, one for it. That's clearly just <laughs> literally ran into the kicker there. Not enough for a first down, still a couple of yards shy, so the punting unit will be back on the field for the Panthers. Review A&M 7-4 last year, two years ago, winners of the SWAC Conference. And this year, a whole lot of turnover. Going to learn a lot about this team in the first couple weeks as they try and gel with one another. Line drive, and it's fielded at the 30. Harris gets a huge block. Harris cuts it back at the 40. Harris looking for daylight and was one tackler away from taking that one to the house. A 27-yard return, some nifty running, and an outstanding block by 31 Tavares Bell. I mean, the whole stadium saw this block coming. You're going to see him just come in on the left side of your screen and watch number 28. Ouch. <laughs> Feel that one up here. Yeah, I mean, he set him up nice. He was going around to that wall they had on the right side. And you talk about a wipeout block and good vision there shown by the return man, Patrick Harris, of setting up his blockers and getting the lane. But what a wipeout block. That was the highlight of that play, the block more so than the return, which was pretty good in its own right. First and ten, great field position for Bethune Cookman. Quarterback will keep it, and he is devoured behind the line of scrimmage. Ball squirted out late. Bethune Cookman covers it up. Let's take one more look at this crushing block. Got them all. Legal. Got the helmet and shoulder in front of the would-be tackler. Wow, crushing. I can't believe it got up. Second down and 15. Robinson again has to scoop it up off the ground. Fires and deflected right in front of him. Well, that one might have been picked off. Adrian Hamilton, the defensive end, a senior out of Dallas, got his big paws on it. Adrian Hamilton is a man amongst boys when he plays defensive end for Prairie View A&M. Great coming off that edge, good speed, phenomenal football player. He's the guy that gets the pressure in the backfield. No snap, and Robinson has the calmness to pick up the football, not to be rushed. And good job by the line again in the protection. Look at the pocket that Bethune Cook was able to have. Third and 15. And look at that throw right on target. That was on the All-American Moses Ellis, but Eddie Poole was too good for him. 16 yards on that play. You know, if you're a quarterback and you got a nice pocket to throw in, you know, you can be very accurate. I mean, look at this. He's just standing there, going through his reads, has time to really extend. Nobody gets within three yards of him, and you see the one-on-one -on -one route there. Selling the go route, got away with the NFL push off, got the feet down, good throw, good catch. Quick snap to Rodney Scott. Seven yards up the middle. Right now, Jay Bethune Cookman clearly winning the battle of the line of scrimmage. And that's what they want to do. That's their game plan. They, they try to out physically. Everybody gets caught up with the speed they have on the perimeter, but they're very good in terms of their interior line play. Robinson flares it out. Leaping grab, but couldn't do anything after. That's Keith Stroud. He actually came from Rutgers, where Brian Jenkins was the wide receivers coach. And Coach Jenkins spoke very highly of Stroud. He said last year it took him a season to get adjusted to playing in the Riyadh Conference. Now with a year underneath his belt, I really expect to keep Stroud to have a breakout season and wide receiver for his team. And Brian Jenkins wants to call a timeout here. Timeout. Facing a third and two. We'll take the timeout with him. Will be a 30 second Cookman leading Prairie View 7 0. We'll see what they dial up when we return. A special ESPN Monday Night Football doubleheader, September 12th. Walt Disney World Resort is proud to motivate and empower our youth as they begin their journey to a future full of endless possibilities. 
Disney's Dreamers Academy with Steve Harvey and Essence Magazine is an immersive program that inspires and fuels the dreams of high school students. Every year, Vista Print, make an impression. Cookman out to an early 7-0 lead. 3.34 remaining in the first quarter of play. It is the seventh annual Miak Swag Challenge presented by Disney. Brian Jenkins talking to his squad during the timeout. 40 years old, just in his second year. And look at that coaching resume. This guy has been around for a while at such a young age. And I think a lesson could be learned. Take a look. Never been a coordinator on offense or defense. Never been a head coach. But look at the success he had a year ago. Taking this McLean Cookman program to postseason play. You know, the key is now, once you do it once, you can get away with it. But can you do it over and over again? And his intensity, you know, we've been around him. A very intense young man. Easy to see why the Wildcat program had such a successful season in his first campaign. Part of a bowl season with Rutgers back in 2009. This is third down at a long two. Scott is the lone back. Play clock ticking down. They did not get it off. Well, that'll drive you, Batty. After a timeout, a delay of game. I mean, how often do we see that? <laughs> More times than we should. Offense, number six, five yards, still third down. And, and that's when, as a quarterback, you're responsible for that. Nobody else is responsible for a delay of game besides a quarterback. You can call timeout. There's so many things you can do. I always feel like delay of game is solely on the shoulders of the quarterback. Obviously changing the play selection here now. Third and two becomes third and seven. Scott empties the backfield. He's wide open. Instead, they go over the middle, and it's complete to the tight end, Jordan Murphy. First time we've called his name today. Six yards on that pickup. Looks like they're going for it. Four down, look for them probably to try and draw them off sides with the hard count. Fourth down the yard. Hand off up the middle and picking his way through tacklers is Rodney Scott. He's got a first down and then some seven yards on fourth and one. Rodney Scott transfer from Old Miss. He's one of those impact players that playing for this team that didn't play a season ago. Great job of making the first guy miss behind the line of scrimmage. Look at the cut there. Weave through the Prairie View defensive line and able to pick up the first down. And the Wildcats still on the move inside the 20. Again to the ground. Big hole up the middle and falling backwards just shy of the goal line is Rodney Scott. Brian Medlock saved the touchdown. 13 yards. Scott's shown the ability to stay low to the ground, kind of difficult for the defense to find him. And he explodes through there in a hurry. And now a timeout called. Bethune Cookman going no huddle. Timeout, Prairie It's the first charge timeout of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Let's take another look at that last run by Scott. You know, we talked about him not being with Bethune Cookman a season ago. He played for Ole Miss. This is some good old-fashioned SEC running. One cut behind the line of scrimmage and then take off. Show the acceleration to get through there. Almost get the touchdown for the Wildcats. And I think one of the things that you're seeing on the FCF level of football is the transfers. The guys that weren't on campus a season ago but now are making a tremendous impact on your football program. And the MEAC has transfers and so does the SWAC. And I think that's one of the big storylines of college football this season. Let's take a look at what you've got in terms of transfers that these schools and these are just some you know you talk about Travis Davidson at Morgan State junior college transfer wasn't there a year ago Lindell Lindell Gibson from Hampton he's a linebacker from Virginia Tech started 11 football games for the Hokies last year including the bowl game Cameron Jude Norfolk State great football player he came from Michigan State he's really good Kevin Nelson Lord A&M from the University of Miami so you talk about having an impact these are some guys that weren't on campus a season ago 
now they're playing immediately and making for the so-called so uh, so so teams very good teams and of course Robinson the quarterback a transfer from Maryland ninth play of the drive to the ground and stonewalled right near the one yard line Rodney Scott ran into a brick wall led by Elton Holmes number 52 I don't care where you played the previous college football. If the hole's not there, the hole's not there. So you can be an all-SEC, all-conference, all-Pac-10 running back. But if your offensive line is not blocking for you, then guess what? You're just an average running back. It sets up a second and goal. Scott dots the eye. They fake it to him, and Robinson will somehow fall short. Goodness, I thought for sure he could... Just trot into the end zone. Give Terrence Mitchell credit for tracking him down. It seems as if Robinson didn't trust his own foot speed. I mean, they fall for the fake all the way. He's out there. It should be a foot race to the pylon. He decides to cut inside and take on Terrence Mitchell instead of trying to outrun him. Can't understand that one, but they go back to the ground, and it's a touchdown for Jackson. Leaving his feet. Finds pay dirt and Bethune Cookman put six more on the board. So after a curious cutback by Jamar Robinson, one which we're still scratching our head over, they quickly get it back into the hands of their reliable running back. And six more points for the Wildcats. Watch this is going Jackson just launch himself. He sees daylight, he leaves his feet. Knows exactly where the goal line is and gets across for the score. Heard with the extra points, knocks it through. And the thing took them now out to a 14-0 lead with a minute 24 remaining in the first quarter. And you see there, look at the gap right there. He actually was a little late getting to the hole, but managed to jump to catch up and get in there. Some violent running right there, as you see. The band, the pride for Bethune Cookman, and they've got plenty of pride with the start their team has right now. 14 to nothing. They've really dominated every facet of this game. I mean, they have, and it seems like the band's getting ready to try and dominate at halftime as well. Good scoring drive there. I mean, that's what you want right there. 11 plays, 43 yards, took four minutes off the clock, capped it off with a touchdown run by Jackson. 146 yards, nearly tripling the output by Prairie View A&M. I think that's surprising and that we talked about it at the top. Both these teams, new quarterbacks, new running backs, a lot of new personnel, and I don't think we expected either offense to light it up, but that's what Bethune-Cookman has done. Yeah, I mean, this is an offense that a season ago average over 45 points a football game, so you know, even if you change offensive coordinators, one thing about this unit, they know how to score points. Underrated defense, but a very strong defense led by Lewis, the conference player of the year, defensive linebacker, and Sanderlands. They really fly around the football. Prairie View's got to find out a way to at least hold on to the ball a little bit longer, get some type of points on the board before this game gets away from them quickly. You cannot afford another turnover. If you do that, the Finn Cookman knows what to do with it. Waddy from the 12. Slips and falls down at the 25 yard line. 13 yard return with two races left till the chase bubble drivers Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Are battling for their postseason lives and with three million dollars on the line in the Sprint Summer Showdown drivers will do anything to win the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta presented by Pennzoil coverage beginning on ESPN tonight at 6 30 p.m. Eastern time Did you say three million dollars it's a lot of coins <laughs> A whole lot. First and ten for the Panthers. Again, staying with Jermaine Waddy. And right now, you've got guys for the Wildcats just knifing in on every play. Yeah, they're, they're really feeling it right now. They're showing it. Look at number 90, Jamel. Farrington, he's just going to shoot the gap right there. Take a look at the quicks, get there, unblock, make the tackle for loss in the backfield. Defensive coordinators love that. What do you want from your front four? Some TFLs, tackles for loss. On second and 12, swing pass to Anderson. Anderson sheds one tackler and then is shoved out of bounds, shy of the 30. He's a freshman out of Houston, a newcomer who they think will make a major impact. A lot of people said he was too small coming out of high school, just 5'9", 170 pounds, but 
coaching staff really likes what they see out of Fred Anderson. I mean, they were thoroughly impressed by him. We asked him who was going to be a guy that was going to step up, make plays. Fred Anderson was the first words that came out of their mouth. True freshman running back slipped under the cracks of the, of the big recruiting down there in Texas, and Fred was able to benefit from it. Third and seven. Trost this time shows some accuracy, but DeAndre Cooper is a yard short. That's a big yard, too. You know, when you're there, you've got to know down and distance how many yards you need to get a first down. It's third down. You've got to turn, see where the first down marker is, and get it. He chose to dance a little bit and came up short of the first down. An exciting first quarter. Will Prairie View go for it? On fourth in the yard, we'll find out when we return from Orlando. Sunday in a Start of the second quarter here from the Citrus Bowl in, Orla in Orlando, Florida. MEAC SWAC Challenge. Bethune Cookman leading at 14 to nothing. And Jay Walker, I ask you, is this a sign of desperation going for it? This part of the field this early in the game. I think it is. And more importantly, they're trying to give their defense some rest. The defense has been on the field for quite a while, getting pushed around a little bit. Well, that's going to smart. James Deckel. That's a senior making that mistake. Deckel is actually from Dillard High School, the alma mater of one coach, Brian Jenkins. Yeah, Deckel there. I mean, that's their best offensive lineman, the senior leadership there. But I mean, you got to hold your water right there. That's costly. That is a long walk back to the sideline. Patrick Harris back to receive the punt. And it's blocked. After some hesitation, it's blocked. And Bethune Cookman will have terrific field position. Howard Jones gets his hand on it. It looked like there was some confusion. I guess he was afraid to punt it the first go round. I think what happened was they let the first blocker come in there untouched, and he realized this was going to get blocked. So he said, Well, let me decide to run for it. No, I can't make it. Their gold jerseys all around. And then he just tried to quick kick it at the last moment. But that's a great special teams play by the Wildcat punt block unit there. Bodies all over, confusing the punter. He didn't know what to do, and they got great field position to start the second quarter. Punters typically not very good at improvising. Jackson stacked up. Trying to fire through the middle, can't do it. Set back a yard. Well, during today's game, you can follow the MEAC SWAC Challenge on Twitter at twitter.com slash MEAC underscore SWAC or on Facebook, facebook.com slash MEAC SWAC Challenge. There are questions going on there, including who will win the MEAC title and who will win the SWAC title. I know Jay Walker's got plenty of thoughts on that. That could be some very interesting conversation. I'm curious to what the viewers think about that. Great storylines in both conferences this season. Second and 11 to the flat and breaking a tackle and finally gang tackled near the stick. Maurice Francois, the senior out of Melbourne, Florida. And right now, Prairie View can't afford to have shoddy tackling the way everything else is going south. They, they've really got to bear down right now and try and prevent Bethune from picking up this first down. This could be crucial early in this contest. Right now, if you can allow Bethune Cookman to settle for a field goal, you still got a chance. If they score some more touchdowns, it's going to be tough. Third and one, plenty for the first, and then some. Pushing the pile is Isidore Jackson. Eight yards on that carry. Well, as we, we talk about, of course, we want to get some interaction from you, the viewers at home, on those questions. But, uh, Jay, I always love putting you on the spot because you can handle it, quite frankly. <laughs> Who do you like, Miak and Swag? Well, you know, with, with all due respect, you always start off with, hey, to be the man, you've got to beat the man. Right. And the man in the Miak conference is Bethune Cookman, mm -hmm. defending champion with the postseason play. Buddy Pugh's got a squad down there. He's got a chip on their shoulder. They think they belong on top. Robinson dances out of trouble. Fires a strike complete near the 10 to his back Jackson. But I will tell you, I think there are a couple sleeper teams out there to watch out for. The favorites are between the South Carolina State and the Miami. But look out for Hampton and Florida a &M. Hampton's got some impact players there. And Joe Taylor keeps his team in the hunt year in and year out. And after this play, I'll give you some, some swag dialogue and see if the folks out there in Facebook and Twitter land agree with me. This is all on record, by the way. We're going we're gonna to hold you to this in November. <laughs> I didn't say they would win. I said it had a chance. On second and five. Robinson fakes it, keeps it, 
Gallops his way to the end zone. Touchdown. Nine yards for Jamar Robinson. And the Wildcats are pouring it on. There's been a problem with Prairie's defense. They are yet to account for the quarterback in the running game. He's the first one to touch the football. You've got to know where the ball is at all times. He's got it. Pulls it. Everybody that's there to account for him is just standing around watching. That time there, it was the inside linebacker, Elton Holmes, that just watched the exchange and was in bad position. The extra point is tacked on. What a start for Bethune Cookman. And the first year starting quarterback, Jamar Robinson, putting on a clinic here in Orlando. This is a breakthrough. It's a magnet. It's a game changer. It's backup. It's relief. It's a role model. It's progress. It's more than a uniform. It's a chance to change the future. There's strong and then there's Army strong. Try it on at GoArmy.com. Look. We've all dealt with the itching of athlete's foot. I can't just wash it away. Killing it takes clinical strength. I only use Motrim and Ultra. Its powerful formula can even cure severe cases of athlete's foot. Nothing cures better. Motrim and Ultra, the killer cure. I never noticed that. What? The grill. Looks like an overhead shot of a stadium. Thank you. The grill lines are the yard lines, which is what I've been saying. Football was created to make us grill. Here we go. Look, retractable dome. That's not retracting. You get it. Plus, what are most mascots? Animals. Think about it. You do know there's people in those costumes, right? Not all of them. Take your dome, please. Sorry. I need new struts for my 2000 Toyota. Let me see struts by AC Delco, Monroe, and any under $50. Uh, we might be able to get some struts from the warehouse. Why watch the counterman tap on his computer and hope he chooses the right part? Go to rockauto.com. Auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. Choose the brands, prices, and features you want. Auto parts at the lowest price. Conveniently delivered to your home or business. Log on to rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Come in and play at Guitar Center's Labor Day weekend sale. Deals in every department, up to 80% off list. Like this Martin Acoustic Electric, just $4.99. Or grab two guitar stands for just $10. Now through Monday at Guitar Center. Browse, flirt, or find your soulmate at Zoosk, the online dating site that lets you date your way. Zoosk.com. The 2011 MEAC SWAC Challenge, brought to you by the U.S. Army. They're strong, then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com for more information. And McDonald's, I'm loving it. Well, Saturday night, VIPs, sponsors, and school personnel joining the community in honoring HBCU graduates who have made a significant impact in their respective communities. Among the distinguished panel of guests, Larry Little and Ken Houston, two Hall of Famers in the NFL. Larry Little and Ken Houston both playing for these respective schools. And uh, again, as we've talked about so much already, the events leading up to the main event Jay, that's one of the many things that makes this so special every year. It's continued to grow, and that Legends reception was a new wrinkle they added. A very classy event there done by the commissioners of both conference, Commissioner Sharp and Commissioner Thomas. Do a good job, really getting behind this. And, you know, I think what I like is the schools are starting to get behind and really feel that this is a must-go-to event on their calendar. Obviously, incredible exposure as well. And right now, the film Cookman taking advantage of that exposure answering some questions whether or not they'd be able to muster up some more great offense like they did a year ago with new personnel and a new coordinator so far the answer has been an emphatic yes last year the thing cookman outscored opponents in the first half 278 to 100 and they're off to another good start today <laughs> 2011 they're hoping could be a replay of the 2010 campaign you're a little tougher to score that many points in conference play against teams that know you and had a year to kind of scout from the senior before. But that with Robinson in there, uh, coming in very comfortable, to, comfortably into this new offense, 
He's been battle tested, proven he's not intimidated by the crowd size. Could be another new special season for the Wildcats. This is Nelson under it at the 10. Trying to go wide, can't do it. Lasso down at the 26. Scoring drive for Bethune Cookman. Another impressive one for that man, Mr. Robinson and company. Five plays, 32 yards, a minute 49 off the clock. Of course, it started on the block punt. Well, you know, and you've got to play team defense, and you're going to check the middle linebacker peeking in the backfield instead of moving his feet while he's stationary. Robinson is getting the leverage on the outside. No low defense from the interior linebacker, Elton Holmes. He does that one. It's easy for Robinson to score. Can't play, can't play middle linebacker flat-footed and make a lot of tackles. you got to stay on the balls of your feet and be in a position to attack. Jamar Robinson making a lot of defenders look bad so far today as Trost, again, inaccurate. I think he's still got some butterflies, Jay. He does. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw the freshman quarterback, Jerry Lockwell, come off the bench if Trost doesn't figure out how to get his act together. They're calling some of the simplest passes you can. A screen pass you should go 100% on unless the ball is tipped. But Trost is backing up so far and not found a comfort zone. Second down and 10. Trost stumbles and just falls forward for about a yard. He has really struggled so far in this game and so far has the Prairie View A&M offense. Look at this, four drives, none of which totaled more than six plays. Out on downs, a pick, and two punts. Yeah, they just haven't got a rhythm. And you know, that offensive chemistry in today's offense, it's so much easier with the spread to get your offense off to a good start. Typically, the defense has an advantage early on, but not with spread offense. If you can do that all season long, a very disappointing start for Prairie View. There's a good strike. Third down and nine completed to DeAndre Cooper. Cooper going the wrong way. Ball's on the ground. Scooped up at the 31. And taking it to the house is DJ Howard. 32 yards, scoop and score for the Wildcats. When it rains, it pours. So often, you see why the team is trying to get that extra yard. We already had the first down yard. It's the best throw of the day by Trost. And then he starts dancing. You got that many jerseys, go down. Don't turn your back to the defense. And good game tackling by the Wildcat defense. Al Gafar Lane. The junior linebacker caused the fumble. And D.J. Howard, all he had to do is pick it up cleanly. And he had a free path to the end zone. You know, we're off with the coordinator, I'm sure. The Heisman North is saying, just get out. We've got the first down. He's spinning. That's a bad thing to do, turning you back into defense. And good job coming in here by number 13, getting that strip in there. That's what you need to do. Punched it out. Touchdown to Phil Cookman. Well, you hit on the key point. He already had the first down. Yeah. You know, that's what you want him just to go down, and then we've got a first down. But, you know, that's one. That's a fine line if you're a coach. You know, you, you appreciate the effort, but you just don't like the mental decision to continue to try and take on four Wildcat defenders. You know, the margin of error now is paper thin for Prairie View A&M already trailing at 28 to nothing. The second turnover of the game. They've had a punt block. They've been out on downs. I, I don't know if you could have a worse start to a football game than the Panthers have had. And, and the fans from Bethune Cookman are showing you why the Wildcat pride is. The bands cranked up their intensity level a little bit. The fans are into it. You know, Bethune's only about two hours away from here, so Prairie View was already at a disadvantage coming from Texas here. But once you start getting that huge monster band they've got, over 350 members strong, then you can get caught up in the elements and lose focus. Uh, this keeps up the, the pride of Bethune Cookman might get a little bit exhausted because they, they're going to have a lot of celebrating might. to do. Yeah, they're active, and you know, I count it. You know, that's how I kind of judge these bands. I counted the tubas. Uh huh. They've got 29 tubas. For Bethune Cookman. 29. You can just scan all the way across. You'll be scanning all day long. It's just bling, bling, and more bling. They got from about the goal line to the 25. <laughs> that's that's a good a good line right there. Nelson again back from the 20. He's dragged down from behind at the 32. Let me talk about the MEAC. How about the SWAC conference this year? 
Well, you know, I think the SWAC coaches know, you know, one of the big stories is Melvin Spears, Alcorn State alum, great offensive mind. He's back at Alcorn. Alcorn's got a great quarterback by the name of Brandon Bridges. They call him Eric Kennedy from Canada. Jackson State probably has the premier player in the conference. And their quarterback, Terrio, all conference, all American. And then Prairie View right there. You know, you got Grambling State, which is on top. Texas Southern is going to be very interesting. They lost their head coach, Johnny Cole, who led them to a championship a year ago, named an interim coach two months ago. So now they've got their work cut out for them. But it would be interesting to see if they can play with that championship pride that they showed a season ago. Trost trying to pump and go and now has to improvise. Squeezes out a yard before Fields brings him down. I, I know we've mentioned it already, but the battle of the line of scrimmage. Again, Prairie View A&M, that's their veteran unit. They've got some, some good players up front, but right now they're getting beat bad. I'm, you know, they're deceptive. I mean, you, you get caught up in the speed and you practice against the speed all day, then you realize, wait a minute, they're pretty strong up front, too, and they're firm and just penetration all over the place for the Wildcat defense, and they're swarming. I mean, they're a very quick unit. Every time a wide receiver catches the ball, there are always three or four defenders there. And I just don't think right now, Prairie View, not only are they having difficulty handling the front four for Bethune Cookman, but once you get to the linebackers, that's where Ryan Lewis in the secondary, they're swarming to the ball. So I don't know if Trost knows exactly what he's looking at. Anderson picking up two, sets up a third down and seven, and that's not going to get it done. That's going to be flag on the field after a three-yard gain. This might be the only thing that will bail them out if there's a late hit. Personal foul. Defense roughing the passer. Number 27, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, that's on Daniel Rhodes. A big mistake for the senior out of Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, the ball's out there. Oh, that's clear. Very lucky he's not ejected from this football game. You know, quarterbacks in a defensive position, led with the helmet. Very fortunate. Why in the world would you do that? Up 28 to nothing. That's why. <laughs> I mean, you, you, got, you like to if it was a closer football game, he right. wouldn't do that, but they've got a big lead. Don't respect their opponent right now. Why not take a cheap shot on him? But you can't do that. He'll hear some words from Coach Brian Jenkins when he gets back to the sideline. At this Prairie View, a glimmer of hope here. First down and ten. Draw play. Forget about it. <laughs> it is devoured, and it's picked up by the third Cookman's Reggie Sandilands, the linebacker. Touchdown, Wildcats. Another huge hit by the Bethune Cookman defense. And another scoop and score. This will be interesting to see if he was down. This is Fred Anderson there, the freshman. Makes the first guy miss. They hold him up. Oh, no. Wow. One person held him up. The other one knocked him silly. That's a fumble and a touchdown. Again, we do have instant replay today. Would not be surprised if they look at it. Won't take long if they take a look <laughs> at it. That was, I mean, that's team defense. You see them swarming to the ball. One guy hold them up, the other guy come and do the hard hit. And I'm pretty sure the officials right now are saying, we've already seen it. No need to take a look at it. And now the linesman comes in. And a timeout called, I believe, by Prairie View. That is what you call gang tackling. And I think Coach Northern is trying to call timeout, so maybe they will review it. But he, he's not going to like the news that he'll receive. You'll see on this play. He's getting ready to tackle him, and then boom! That's Ryan Lewis. That is the preseason defensive play of the, player of the year from the MEAC, a senior out of Papano Beach, Ely High School. And he absolutely pummels Fred Anderson. And he knew he hit him good, too. You know, as soon as he hit him, he extended through it, you know. Watch the contact. He's going to follow through. Bow! He knows he's got him. Looking, looking for the ball. He's going to celebrate. And he's like, oh, we're running the other way. He's a good-looking football prospect, Ryan Lewis. I really like him, you know. He's a linebacker that likes to hit. You know, some linebackers like to be finesse guys and cover. Lewis likes to hit you. And he delivered a knockout blow there. And what you saw on that last play, Lewis with the hit, Sandilands on the recovery, that formulates that linebacking core, which some believe is the best in Bethune-Cookman history. 
They're one of the best in FCS football throughout the, the country. Hand coach. It's challenging that it, it was not a fumble on the field. The players under review. Well, Heisman Northern. What do you have to lose? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you almost have to at this point. If it's close, you've got to challenge it. And in the history of this MIAC SWAC challenge, I don't think there's ever been such a one-sided performance as to what we're witnessing right now. You know, if there are any questions whether or not Bethune Cookman was going to have the ability to defend their title, hmm, the well, odds are pretty good right now from this game. And you bring up a great point. In the previous six matchups, MIAC SWAC challenge, no game has been decided by more than 10 points. <laughs> and here we stand now. It's 34 nothing, with an extra point pending. Yeah. And once again, it all started with the penetration made by that defensive line for Bethune Cookman. And we called earlier Jamil Farrington from that defensive tackle position. Got behind the line of scrimmage, made the running back shift and adjust. And then we talked about the linebacker extraordinaire is coming in, Sandaland and Lewis with the fumble and the touchdown. This has now been labeled just a booth review, so no timeout will be charged to Prairie View a and m Again, in college football, play like that, you're going to review it nine times out of ten to make sure. Prairie View is not charged with a timeout. The call is confirmed on the field. It is a fumble. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. Now the nightmare continues for Prairie View a and m Coach Jenkins, you know, he's still not happy. You know, he, he's still, that's the intensity he brings. Focus, you're up by 35. It will soon to be 35 points if you convert on this PAT. He's still just as intense. I mean, he's got the ability to will his team to do great things. I think last year's squad, maybe not the most talented within the conference, but he will them to a victory. Third turnover of the day for Prairie View AM. 14 points off of turnovers for the Wildcats. They lead it 35 to nothing. You think you colder than me? Turn on the radio. Me. Turn on the TV. Me. Turn on the movie. No shortage of great rides here at Disney World in Orlando, and it's been a great ride for Bethune Cookman thus far. 35 zip with 10.23 remaining. In the first half of all the scenarios we thought might play out, this was certainly not one of them. The Prairie View a and started this game off slowly, and they have shot themselves in the foot ever since. They haven't showed up yet. I mean, I guess the good news for Prairie View is you got to think this is not my football team. Mm -hmm. You know, well, our team may still be stuck in Texas, and maybe Cotton Traffic. They've got to buckle down and do the little things right. Pick up a first down at a time. I, mean, I think when you're down like this, what you want to do is just tell everybody, don't try and get back in the game in one play, but just be fundamentally sound, and they're yet to do that. Wadi feels it at the 10. And is upended at the 32. Now the AL Central is in full effect. Rivals battling as Paul Canerco and the White Sox look to make ground in the division. They take on Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers. Cabrera hitting a walk-off over yesterday for Detroit. It's the White Sox and the Tigers on ESPN2 Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell as part of the Hunt for October tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. I wonder if Verlander's on the map. We'll talk about having a season. He's been ridiculously good. It's been uh, the year of the pitcher in the American League. Weaver's been awfully good himself, but Verlander has been at times literally unhittable. Yeah. Well, you're Prairie View a and here, Jay Walker, and obviously you didn't expect to be down 35 nothing in the first half. What do you do to try to inch back into this ball game? One first down at a time. You know, if you pick up some positive yardage running the football, that's what you want. Tell your offensive line to firm it up a little bit. And then maybe as you start picking up first downs, then you can start getting comfortable running this Mark Orlando type of offense they want to do. You know, Mark Orlando likes to have a high play count. He likes to wear you down and just continue to call plays, call plays. That's Mark Orlando there, the offensive coordinator. New quarterback in the game for Prairie View A&M. And there you see him running. That's DeAndre Smiley, a freshman out of Lufkin, Texas. 
you know, they've got a package for Smiley in there. We knew we were going to see him when he was going to run the ball. So if you see Smiley in the game, look for him to run. He's just a freshman. He's got a big arm. But I think Coach Orlando's deciding not to necessarily keep the freshman in the game right now in this type of environment. Back to Trost and back to the ground game. It's Wadi. Plowing through the right side. And he'll set up a third down and eight, six yards on that carry. You know, Mark Orlando is a guy that if you follow me and Swack football, this guy is a legend. Everywhere he's been, he's had tremendous success. He actually coached Heisman Northern back at Southern. And so the two are very familiar with one another. And last year, he led that Bethune-Cookman offense to a record-setting year. This ball through the hands could have easily been another pick. Spencer Nelson, who only goes 5'8", having to leave his feet on this one. Yeah, but another wide open receiver. There was a window there, and the quarterback did not deliver the ball. See, that's got to be frustrating to the offensive coordinator. They're making the right calls. Receivers are running open, but the quarterback doesn't have the ability to get it to him. Just a tough day at the office. And I think you know, Mark Orlando was not legendary enough within the world of black college football. The job he did last year, Bethune solidified his place. I mean, he had tremendous success for years at Southern University with their program. And came over to the MEAC and dominated. Then this year went back to the swag. Good job on the punt. Getting the Wildcats inside the 10. 35 nothing our score. The U.S. Open, tomorrow at 7 on ESPN2. This is a breakthrough. It's a magnet. It's a game changer. It's backup. It's relief. It's a role model. It's progress. It's more than a uniform. It's a chance to change the future. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Try it on at GoArmy.com. What makes us number one in motorcycle insurance? We love bikes. We love riders. And most... Mike Morgan alongside Jay Walker from the historic Citrus Bowl. Two historic programs battling here at the MEAC Swag Challenge. So far, it's been all Bethune-Cookman. 35-0 with 8.28 remaining in the first half. Bethune-Cookman's offense hasn't touched the football in over six minutes, and yet during that time frame, they've outscored Prairie View 14-0. You know, very opportunistic defense, creating turnovers, and not only creating the turnovers, but returning the turnovers in the touchdown. Some tough yards by Rodney Scott on first down. In case you're just joining us, a game summary thus far. Prairie View sloppy with the football. Three turnovers on seven possessions, just 86 yards. Jamar Robinson didn't know what to expect from that young man. First-year starter. He's been sensational thus far. Really, he's played a flawless game. And, of course, the Wildcats taking advantage of the turnovers. Second down and a long one. And a good job of reversing the field. Scott keeps the legs churning and gobbles up eight yards. Well, you talk about having Rodney Scott in there to spell Isidore Jackson from time to time. You know, both very small, compact backs. They don't miss a beat. I believe that the running back situation is getting real comfortable. Rodney Scott seems to be very comfortable in there running that football, blending into this offensive scheme as if the Wildcats needed some more offensive firepower. Seems like the old Miss transfer is going to be an impact player for the whole season. Little play action. Dump it off to the back. Scott. Scott with an alley. And Scott weaves his way down to about the 48-yard line. 18 more yards. Really, the Bethune-Cookman offense just makes it look easy. Guys are in space. A whole lot of daylight on every play. The good fundamental. Take a look at the... Your right side, left side of your monitor. Look at the downfield blocking by Keith Stroud, number 10. 
Look at that. That's how you do it right there. That's textbook. Step on his feet. You're not going anywhere. And he just drives the safety down the field. Put him in no man's land. Anytime you see a running back get that type of yardage down the field, great wide receiver blocking took place. A couple yards on first down for Jackson. Elton Holmes on the tackle. Bethune Cookman averaging six and a half yards per play. Second down, eight yards to go. Three in the pattern, and the throw is high. Intended for Preston Fleckley. As you can tell, Prairie View is trying to think, well, we can't sit back here and continue to get beat up by this Bethune-Cookman offense, so they're bringing pressure. One of the first all-out blitzes we've seen from the Prairie View defense and good job putting a good lick on Robinson delivered by Elton Holmes, the inside linebacker. Holmes has played a good game. He's been very active thus far today. He needs a little help, though. We talk about how does Prairie View get back in this game. It would help out if they can get a stop right now. If the defense can step up, make some plays, create some turnovers, and give the offense a chance to get the ball back. On third and eight, Robinson delivers. And another first down, Maurice Francois. Squirms his way past the marker nine yards. And see, that was a difference between Kirby earlier when we saw their wide receiver dancing around DeAndre Cooper and not getting the first down. Francois knew exactly where the first down marker was, made the reception, turned, got vertically up the field, and picked up the first down. Robinson out of the gun. Takes the swing, goes downfield, wide open target. That's Francois. Francois breaks a tackle at the 10, 5, and knocked out of bounds at the two yard line. Moses Ellis saved a touchdown. They just flooded the zone. They put three wide receivers on the left side of the field, added a running back up there, and confused them. Wherever he was in zone coverage, but look at the wide open gaps. Francois gets around that outside linebacker. Turns up field, good smooth, spin move there. Shows the strength to run after catch. It almost gets into the end zone. They're just picking them apart. 39 yards, sets up a first and goal. A little more miss deception than a pass in the flat and another touchdown. This is a clinic. Patrick Harris, sophomore out of Port St. Lucie. Finds pay dirt and it is 41 to nothing. Like that Brian McLeod, 86. Play action, you know, try and sell the run to the left, come back to the right, easy throw. And good job by Clayton of getting into the end zone. There were several Wildcat wide receivers that were open and the extra point is good. And Bethune continues to pour it on. Yet another easy trip to the end zone for the Wildcats. First half, and would you believe, 42 to nothing. We welcome you back to the Citrus Bowl. It's been all Bethune Cookman. 42 to nothing with 5.09 remaining in the first half. Both these teams spending a day at Disney World enjoying the park rides. Bethune Cookman. On the rock and roll roller coaster starring Aerosmith. A good time. I've been on that a few times. Prairie View in the Twilight Zone Terror of Tower. This one. That's the one right there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if, if, if your blood pressure is not already up, it'll take it there. <laughs> you see, they look dazed and confused. <laughs> That's classic, and anybody that's been on that ride knows exactly what those gentlemen are feeling. I was down here a few years ago. The uh, Old Spice Challenge, the basketball tournament Disney puts on every year, and had a chance to go on those rides a few times. It's so scary, but then you wind up back in line again. You want to do it you again. You want to do it again. And I bet when you were getting off the ride, you probably looked just like those I looked guys just too. like that. 
I was looking for a barf bag, but then I was the first one to get back in line. You know, got to get back on the horse. Prairie View would love to get back on any kind of horse here. They have been completely annihilated early on in this game. Wadi on the return. Past the 30 and down at the 35 yard line. What happened on this last touchdown? They set him up by formation. They made him think that everything was going to go around this way. And what did they do instead? They're going to sneak routes out this way to flood the zone. Nice little two level throw. He's got his choice of receivers. You see Poole open in the back of the end zone. He decides to go underneath with Clayton. But great design by making the defense think everything is going to the left and bringing it back to the right. It's been a record performance, tying a school record with 42 first half points already for Bethune Cookman, the most since they joined Division I. Fred Anderson, that's not on him. He had no room to run. The loss of eight on the play. Yeah, they're flying around. This defensive unit was very overshadowed last year by the offensive output. And I think that their defensive coordinator, Charles Yogi Jones, has got this defense playing at a very intense level right now. They've got their eyes on the shutout, and the way they're going right now, it's going to be very difficult for Prairie View to figure out a way to get on the board. Second down and 18. Trost all kinds of time, and maybe the best pass he's had on the day. And a great job of Spencer Nelson holding on. 22 yards on that hookup. Guys have been open. This is a cover two zone. The middle of the field is wide open. You see him attack the zone right there. It's there. He delivers it there. Good, good thrown pass. Maybe close. That's the throw he needs to start establishing some type of rhythm and getting his confidence back. Big hole up the middle. Past the 30. Galloping his way toward the sideline. It's Waddy and finally lassoed down from behind at the 12-yard line. Number 22. Lamar tackles him after a 39-yard pickup. Yeah, I think that's some Prairie View football right there. Get an opportunity to show off some of that Texas speed, and you see Waddy one cut, get up the middle, make the free safety miss with a poor angle of pursuit, and he gets to the outside, and there's life again. There's Cooper. Cooper at the five. Touchdown. A 11-yard touchdown reception for the junior out of Houston, Texas, DeAndre Cooper. You got to walk before you can run, right, Jay? <laughs> You've got to, and I think that's what they've been expecting to do. That's what they wanted to do. Run the ball in the middle, then throw the horizontal passing game with the wide receiver bubble screens and allow the wideouts to make some big plays. Barrick hammers it home. Two big plays. First, the big run that set it up. You see the angle of pursuit right there. Just a poor job by the free safety for Bethune Cookman coming up, getting shook. And Waddy does a good job of making him miss and getting to the outside. And this right here is just all Cooper. He just wanted to make one guy miss. Get inside. Weed. Good downfield block there by Spencer Nelson. And the Panthers have arrived at the Miak Swack Challenge. 42 to 7 our score. And I know as a coach, that's what you're looking for. You know, you got to think, what are you going to tell your team at halftime? Well, if you can tell your team, hey, if we don't put the ball down and stop beating ourselves, what's to say we can't go out there and force three or four turnovers in the second half to get right back in this contest? Very crucial for them to at least put some points on the board so they can have that glimmer of hope for the second half. Now the scoring drive, this is the kind they're going to need the rest of the day, not just <laughs> finding the end zone, but quickly a minute 15 off the clock and just four plays. The big run by Wadi setting it up. And if their defense can show up, I mean, if their defense can come out, get a three and out right now, maybe have some time on the clock, they can try to go into halftime with a little bit of momentum. And number 28, Angelo Jonathan Trost, the quarterback, showing a little bit of confidence for the first time today. He's looked very shaky from the jump. Panthers now could use a good play on special teams. That'll help. He should have let that go, but Courtney Keith didn't. Let's send it to Ryan Burr in our Bristol studio, Ryan. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, LSU makes a statement to the nation beating Oregon. 
Boise State starts another season on the road, starts another season with a big win, and we will head back to the Citrus Bowl for the Battle of the Bands. All coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report. We'll see you then, guys. All right, thank Outside. you so much, Ryan. On the kicking team, number 86, five yards, three kick. Wow. Offsides the penalty. On the kick, so we'll do it again. Now, I want to mention something that Ryan talked about, Boise State. My goodness, is there any doubt that they are legit, that they are for real? They just do this every year. They beat ranked opponents. I mean, they do, and, you know, their mentality. They will go on the road and play at your place. You know, you don't see, I don't see a bunch of teams lining up to go play at Boise. No. You know, last time somebody went there, Boise beat them as well. I think it was that Oregon squad that got beat by them. So just, I mean, the job they do, and, you know, it's going to be interesting for them. Can they handle the pressure of having to make the undefeated run? Because, you know, it's, it's been proven. If you don't win out, if they don't go undefeated, they don't get the BCS bid. And in Nevada, Colin Kaepernick ended that form last year. But who knows? They'll be pulling for Georgia the rest of the way. Mark Rick has a huge game on Saturday playing host of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Courtney Keith racing through the hole on the right side, tripped up at the 35 and down to the 38-yard line. So good field position for the Wildcats. All right, Jay, now obviously the Prairie View defense has got to step it up, right? They, they haven't you know, made any plays for them. They need to step up right now, help your offense. Your offense finally scored. Now the defense needs to get a three and out right now. You just scored and do three plays and out and get your offense back on the field. Now a big one coming up on Monday night on ESPN. It's an ACC football battle as Lamar Miller and Miami take on Danny O'Brien and the Maryland Terps. Will Al Golden or Randy Edsel get the win in their ACC debut? College football primetime as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week on ESPN. That'll be Monday night. At 8 o'clock Eastern. A lot that Al Golden has already had to go through in just a short amount of time in Coral Gables. Two new coaches in that ball game, Miami, Maryland. Two new coaches, or several new coaches, I should say, in the MEAC and the SWAC. And you can comment on that on Twitter and Facebook. That's going to be one of the questions everybody wants to know with the new coaches that have come into the conference. Who's going to have the greatest success? I mean, they've got some fantastic coaches that have entered the MEAC conference. You've got Gary Hurl at Howard. You've got Rob Broadway coming from Bramley, going over to North Carolina a &T. Henry Frazier, who was at Prairie View and m is now at North Carolina Central. Which one of these coaches do you think will have the greatest success this upcoming MEAC football season? I want to hear from you. Send us a tweet. Be interesting to see what the people think. The Wildcats ripping off 16 more yards on that last play. Another first down already inside Panthers territory at the 35. Swing pass. It's been there for him all day. Good hit. Jars the ball loose from Jordan Murphy. But like everything else today, it goes the way. A Bethune Cookman landing out of bounds. And this is one where Bethune Cookman just seems too fast, too strong for Prairie View in terms of just offensively speaking. I mean, the fact that Prairie View can get no penetration to get to Robinson. He's basically been untouched all afternoon. Their wide receivers, when they catch the ball in space, they have the ability to pick up yards after the catch. So Prairie View's got to increase the intensity level. And if I'm them, I, I come out of my comfort zone. I start blitzing every play. Trying to get a hit on Robinson. Don't let him get too comfortable back there. They rush four on second and six. Screen pass set up nicely. Complete to Patrick Harris. Harris along the near sideline. A penalty flag at the 15, and this one likely coming back. You know, Jay, I think for those that are tuning in and maybe they haven't seen Prairie View in a while, this is not your older brother's Prairie View team that holding on the offense number 75 10 yards from the spot of the pit foul replay second down 75 for Bethune Cookman is Corey Mason but a lot of people they associate Prairie View with that record-breaking losing streak as you take another look at the play well, see, that, that's his mistake I mean you know when you're a big 
offensive tackle, and you got your hands on a on a little small defensive back. That's Moses Ellis. He only goes 5'9", 185. Knock him down. Yeah. Push him. Yeah, you can do that with one hand. <laughs> on second and a yard, Robinson will work from the gun. You see trips at the top of your screen. That's where he's going. And that's going to be another first down. And another penalty flag on the play. Gordon on the catch as they're spreading the wealth. A number of different guys and yellow catching the ball thus far today. Holding offense. Number 81. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. But Jay, just to complete the thought, you following these leagues know it so well. When people think of Prairie View on the outside, they think of that record-long losing streak. Maybe they think this has just been another uh, doormat period in time. But the last two years, they've won the SWAC. Last year, they won seven games. So it's not as if this is a chopped liver group. No, not at all. You know, they've got an on-campus facility which is being built. And I think you know what a lot of people get lost in, when Prairie View had the longest losing streak in the nation, they had no scholarships. Mm -hmm. So they, it was a non-scholarship school getting beat by teams that had scholarship everywhere. Somehow Robinson pulls a Houdiniak and avoids the sack and then throws it away. I don't know how he didn't go down on this play. Well, he did a good job of having good balance and enough arm strength to get that ball across the line of scrimmage so it's not called intentional grounding. You take a look here. Blind side. They can't bring him down. He's a big strong kid. Uses the ball to balance himself and has enough arm strength to get across the line of scrimmage to avoid the intentional ground. Donald Law, the third, 6'5", 270, had a bear hug on him, and he just squirted away. On third down and six. Wisely throws it away. So a nice job by the Prairie View defense stiffening up there. They got the assist from the penalty markers that Bapu had two penalties on Bethune's offensive unit. Prairie View able to take advantage and force the Wildcats to a fourth and medium situation. And they're going to line up for a field goal here. Now, did you know that when Prairie View had the longest losing streak that they weren't giving out scholarships? I did not know that. See, most people don't know that. They just assume. And I think now that the university has made the commitment to the football program, they got fully funded scholarships. Olawski from 48 is wide left. So give Prairie View A&M's defense credit. They stop him on third down. A long field goal is no good. And some more momentum for the Panthers. They got the stop there. Now the defense is realizing maybe we can play them. They got some hits on Robinson, which I think was the key. And now you got to think, with a minute to go, how aggressive do you want to be? <laughs> you can't afford to have a turnover and let them run it back to you. So do they have the comfort zone down? By 35 points, I think you come out and you run your offense. You know, you try and steal some points here at the end of this half. Now, total yards so far today. Bethune Cookman more than doubling the output of Prairie View AM. On first down, Trost has time, delivers complete at the 45 and down at midfield. DJ Harris. Played his high school ball in Shelby, Texas, 19 yards for a first down. No go, no huddle, hurry up here. Prairie View does have one timeout remaining. Trost going to tuck it and run. He loses the football, and it's recovered by Bethune Cookman. Reggie Sandilands, Johnny on the spot, smothers it. And that is the fourth turnover on Prairie View A&M. The one thing we said they cannot afford to do, they come out and do it. I mean, untouched. He's just going through there and trying to exchange it. The ball just comes out. You know, I thought it was a poor decision to leave the pocket in the first place. In a two-minute situation, you don't want to be running the football. You don't want to throw it away or find a, a wide receiver that's open. He took off running and then compounded the poor mental decision to run the football with an error. You're not going to win many ball games with that number. Four zip on turnovers. Prairie View AM has been very generous with the football. Ryan Davis was breathing down Trost's neck on that last play, but really he's got to hold on to that ball. 
Lovett into the game in the backfield. There to block. Home run ball down the sideline and out of bounds. That just got away from him there, but offensive coordinator Bethune Cookman, Rob Spence, showing you his mentality. We've got a 35 point lead. <laughs> Minutes ago before the half doesn't matter. We're still keeping our foot on the gas pedal, trying to score more points. Rob Spence, who's been around a long time, he's been an offensive coordinator at five different schools, including Syracuse and Clemson. Second and ten for Robinson. Goes short and incomplete. Bad reads by Robinson. Had a wide open receiver running up the seam. He chose to go with the underneath route. Although Robinson has looked fantastic at times, that was a poor decision where to go with the football. But I'm still thoroughly impressed. With this Bethune Cookman offensive line. I mean, Robinson sits back there. He doesn't get touched. Look at the time he has to throw. Third and ten, launching another one deep. Nobody there. And that'll stop the clock with 16 seconds remaining. Well, I think we've got our storyline for the second half. You know, Prairie View seems to have figured out a way to take Bethune Cookman out of their comfort zone. Will mm -hmm. they be able to make the halftime adjustments on the offensive side of the ball to put up some points where maybe they can get back in this game and more importantly, can they protect the football in the second half? Well, you hated to see that last turnover in the gravy right now because it, it came from Trost who was starting to gain some confidence. He was starting to do some good things and then inexplicably he just loses the ball. Football can be a very funny game sometimes. If you like rugby punting, you've come to the right place today. Both teams going that route. Oh, Who's going to turn Ellis at the 15. Breaks a tackle. Ellis steps out of bounds, trying to tightrope the sideline. They will mark him out at the 47 yard line. Moses Ellis, very dangerous return man and defensive back for Prairie View. 33 yard return. Three seconds left. Maybe a Hail Mary. Wow, he tiptoed that sideline. Had he been able to just make that one guy miss cleanly instead of getting pushed to the outside, I think he would have taken that ball to the house for the touchdown. Well, Trost hasn't thrown many deep balls today. We're going to get a chance to see what he can do. Just a three man rush. Cox and fires deep down the sideline and intercepted. Well, DeAndre Cooper, if he throws that a little bit farther, Cooper might have a chance at it, but D.J. Howard playing some center field picks it off. And that'll be the fifth turnover of the half and the final play of the first half. Going where they had two defensive backs, and Howard does a good job of, as you said, playing center field, covering a lot of range, a lot of ground, and got the interception. Now that is our score at the half, 42 to 7. Bethune Cookman with the lead. Coming up after the break, we'll check in with Ryan Bird in the studio with the State Farm halftime report. And when we come back, it's back to the Citrus Bowl for the Battle of the Bands, the sights and sounds. This is must see TV, people. This halftime report, our score at the half. Bethune Cookman leading Prairie View AM 42 to 7. It was 42 to nothing before the last touchdown scored by the Panthers. Let's look at today's Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's, and we will bring in the Marching Storm Band of Prairie View, one of the best in the business.
another great performance by the Marching Storm Band of Prairie View. And now it's time for the pride of Bethune-Cookman. That was bringing the flavor brought to you by McDonald's. When we come back, a look back at the first half, highlights and stats when we return from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. I read an article. From the beginning, the Southwestern Athletic Conference has molded and formed students to become legends, to step into the world and take it by storm. The Southwestern Athletic Conference prides itself in excellence, in determination, in grit, and in making champions. There are some here, some that the next generation will call heroes. The Southwestern Athletic Conference, honor the heritage. This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. And welcome back to the MEAC SWAC Challenge. And once again, our score at the half, 42 to 7. Jay Walker, it was all Bethune-Cookman in the first half. I mean, they came out and they played with a chip on their shoulder. You talk about having conference pride. Bethune-Cookman, the defending MEAC champions, came here and just dominated Prairie View up and down the field. Special teams, offense, defense, a quite impressive performance by Coach Brian Jenkins' squad. Well, let's look at the first half highlights, and as you would expect by the score, most of these are going to be courtesy of the Wildcats. Yeah, Jamar Robinson, their transfer quarterback from Maryland, came in early, got his first touchdown for the Wildcats, calling his own number, getting around the outside, and then it just became the defense, swarming to the ball. Ryan Lewis, uh, Reggie Sandiland, just dominating the running attempts for Prairie View A&M. This was a very good first half for Bethune-Cookman. Dominated, of course, by the Bethune-Cookman defense. All kinds of turnovers. They just kept coughing it up. They couldn't hold on to the football. And you, you're not going to beat a good football team if you turn the football over. And for Prairie View A&M, they turned it over five times, and Bethune was able to capitalize. And the more the game went along, the more Jamar Robinson found his comfort zone throwing the football there. But at the end of the first half, there was a little bit of excitement for Prairie View. They got this big, long run, which got them in scoring position, and then they were able to cap it off with a touchdown pass here by Cooper. And just when we thought they were losing momentum, they found a way to put some points on the board before the half. Well, as you look at the halftime stats, Bethune-Cookman dominating virtually every category. The most important one, turnovers, five zip. You're not going to win many football games doing that. Obviously, Prairie View needs to turn that number around somewhat. 0 of 6 on third downs, and the big plays, 10 yards or more, 15 of them for Bethune Cookman. That's an unbelievable number. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. And, you know, the third down conversions, you know, you actually win football games by get converting third down opportunities into first downs. Prairie View was ineffective at doing that. If they're going to have any chance of getting back in this contest, it starts one first down at a time. So the second half kickoff, Bethune Cookman will get the ball first. Already up by five touchdowns. 
They've done a good job thus far on special teams, but this time bottled up. Nice job by Prairie View holding up inside the 20. That'll be one of the keys there. If they can get the special teams to give them a spark, some good hard tackling. But we talked about the fact that Bethune Cookman's offense was going up and down the field. Right now, we need to see what the halftime adjustments were. And if this Prairie View defense can come up with three plays and out and get the offense on the field to try and get back into it in a hurry, we'll know right away if they're going to have an opportunity to get back in this ball game in the second half. Well, certainly sparking that offense in the first half was the man behind center here in the shotgun, Jamar Robinson. The transfer out of Maryland was terrific, and the running game wasn't bad either. And on first down, 12 more yards for Isidore Jackson. He's been ripping off big run after big run. If it's not Jackson, it's Rodney Scott. Jamar Robinson, of course, has made some pretty, pretty big plays on the ground as well. First down, another gaping hole up the middle and almost breaking free for a score was Jackson. Terrence Mitchell saved the touchdown. Let's see what these teams need to do to get to a better place brought to you by State Farm. Well, if you're perfect, you've got to protect the football first and foremost and then slow down this Bethune-Cookman offense, which they're doing neither of right now. Bethune-Cookman, keep doing what you're doing. And don't let your foot off the gas pedal. Keep the pressure on the Prairie View offense. First and ten. And good game tackling there by Prairie View right at the line of scrimmage. See, that's one of those plays there. Doesn't show up in the stat book, but that's why Moses Ellis is an All-American defensive back. They tried a wide receiver screen. He shed the blocker, kept the play on the inside, didn't get beat on the outside, and then allowed the rest of the defense to pursue and gang tackle the Wildcat receiver. Can only imagine what the talk was like in the Prairie View locker room at the half to try and get this team fired up and get them back into the ballgame. You need to get the spirits high. A stop here would be nice. They'll be the Panthers on second down and 10. Good lick delivered, and it's a incomplete pass. Ryan Love pummeling Jamar Robinson. And nearly an interception. We started to discover. Prairie View figured out a way to do some stunts and to get some pressure on Robinson at the end of the first half. And this one here, this is just a good one-on-one. -on -one. Get up there and make the quarterback pay. If they can continue to get that type of pressure on Robinson and put some good licks on him, then turnovers will come, and that will get him back into it. Well, Jay, obviously, if Prairie View is going to get to a better state, brought to you by State Farm, they're going to need a stop right here. It's third and ten. Panthers rushing four. Deep ball down the sideline. What a catch. Eddie Poole, the sixth more sophomore out of Bell Glade, Florida. He was draped by Moses Ellis. You couldn't have had better coverage. Just a great catch. Well, it's the laws of physics. Six foot four versus five foot nine. And when the ball's thrown high, six foot four is going to win. Poole does a good job of going up, catching that ball at its highest point to come down with the big grab. Eddie Poole out of Glade Central in Bell Glade, Florida, one of the top high school programs year in, year out, producing college talent. So now a first and goal from the nine. And off up the middle, breaking free and into the end zone. Isidore Jackson finds pay dirt. 48 to 7, nine yard touchdown run. Good balance showed by Jackson on this one. Watch the initial hit. Wham! He stuffed in the hole, but it was an arm tackle. Didn't slow down his legs. He kept the legs churning over and was able to get to the end zone. Second touchdown run for Jackson. And the extra point is not through. Not what you want if you're Prairie View A&M. A touchdown to start the second half, 49-7. You see this scamper right here. Initial contact behind the line of scrimmage doesn't slow him down. He keeps the legs going and just swipes at the oncoming defender. That's a tough one there. You've got him wrapped up. Should be a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Instead, he keeps his feet going and gets into the end zone. I would have to imagine Heisman Northen, who has been a longtime great defensive coordinator, 
for many years he is not too pleased with the tackling today. Five play 76 yard drive. Twelve forty two remaining in the third quarter. And if you're Prairie View A&M you almost have to assume that. The defense is going to yield some more points. They, they just seem overmatched today. And so offensively a lot more pressure on that man Mark Orlando. To start dialing up some touchdowns here. You know what, and what you want for Mark Orlando he's a high play count. You know, they score a lot of their points when they wear you down they continue to hit you with play after play. But when they're not getting first downs they're not on the field so. His whole offensive philosophy has to change and they have to start relying on the big play the vertical pass compared to the high play count. Wadi back to receive and it's been that kind of day for Prairie View a and M fooled by the kickoff he falls down in space. You, you, you take a look at him going up tall and that's Eddie Poole that's the matchup we talked about between Poole and Ellis. Great concentration by both players, but Poole was fortunate to come down with the ball. Well, we talked about trying to get to a better state, Jay, and for Prairie View A&M, slowing down the Bethune offense, obviously that was not done on that last drive. Yeah, that's been the riddle. They have not been able to slow them down. Bethune Cookman had over 300 yards total offense in the first half, and the drive to start off the second half, they go right down the field again. Groover bottled up near the line by Fields, one of the many talented linebackers on this Bethune Cookman defense. Marco Lando, who we've talked about throughout the broadcast. On second and eight. Trost. This is not his game. Typically bad things have happened when he's run it. That time he does gain some positive yardage before getting upended by Daniel Rhodes. Eight yard pickup. He didn't look too comfortable at the end of that run. Running the football is not his forte. Key right now. He got an opportunity for third and short. Look for some of the underneath stuff or call your number again to run for the first down. Little pass in the flat. That'll be a first down. For Gabe Dunlap, first time we've called his name today, a freshman out of Allen, Texas. The majority of the roster for Prairie View A&M, as you would expect from the state of Texas, so much great high school talent. Really, both these programs have that in common. Bethune Cookman from the state of Florida, Prairie View A&M from the state of Texas. Both states are very rich in high school talent year in, year out. As a penalty flag is thrown by the linesman. 75 five yard penalty still first down and that's on the left tackle Tim Tusi who's one of the better blockers in the swag just the one two first down 15 deep ball near side and almost picked off well, the coverage couldn't have been any better by Daniel Rhodes shadowing DeAndre Cooper step for step. What a great job by Cooper. Once he realized he couldn't come down with the ball, your number one job as a wide receiver becomes play defensive back. Don't allow the defender to intercept that pass. Had Cooper not slung him to the ground, that would have been an interception. The sixth turnover for the day had that occurred. Blitz coming second and 15, and Trost is buried. Thirteen. Al Jafar Lane, the junior linebacker, coming in free. Loss of ten on the play. Now it's third down and twenty-five. Four-man rush. Trost will go short. And misfires and hangs his back out to dry. And there's going to be an unnecessary roughness penalty. We've already seen one of these called on Bethune Cookman. They're getting their licks in today. Yeah, you know, you've got a receiver going across the formation. Clearly, the ball was not going to be caught. He's in a vulnerable position. And Reggie Sandilands just put a lick on him for 
No reason at all. Uncalled for. Personal foul. Defense. Number 11. Unnecessary roughness. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Santa lands on Jacoby King, who got walloped. We'll see here. I mean, boss tip. He's exposed right there. That's a hit you just can't put. Helmet to helmet. Now it is first down. And nothing doing on the carry for Fred Anderson. Very little on the ground today for the Panthers. Not a whole lot of balance. And offensively, haven't been able to do anything. I mean, they like to be able to run the football. They're a team that likes to run it just to set up the pass, but they haven't been able to run the football too effectively. And the passing game hasn't been too helpful. There's Anderson in the flat. That'll make it third and manageable, about three. Three of you came into this game four and four all time versus the Mia. The 2009 SWAC champions hoping to get off to a good start this year. First ever appearance in the MEAC SWAC Challenge, but they have really been overmatched thus far. Trost, good looking ball on the quick slant, but in and out of the hands of the intended target. That's number 13, Greg Thurman. Noted closely by Deion Hanks. And those are the ones that you need. We talked about third down conversion. You need to put a couple of those together. The Panthers continue to be hampered by their lack of ability to convert on third down. Harris back to receive the punt. Collects it on one hop and skips out of bounds at the 28. We're going to take a timeout here. It's been all Bethune Cookman, 49 to 7 here from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Beyond all the excitement of the theme parks, Walt Disney World Resort is proud to motivate and empower our youth as they begin their journey to a future full of endless possibilities. Disney's Dreamers Academy with Steve Harvey and Essence Magazine is an immersive program that inspires and fuels the dreams of high school students. It starts with a dream. We brought you all down here to explore your dreams. Every year, 100 students from around the U.S. participate in a once-in-a-lifetime experience that will help them pursue their dreams through interactive career workshops, motivational talks, and all the fun the Disney parks have to offer. In this powerful program, Disney Dreamers engage in a wide range of experiences while working hand-in-hand -hand with community and industry leaders. Anywhere. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. And we welcome you back to the 2011 MEAC SWAC Challenge presented by Disney. Bethune Cookman leading Prairie View AM 49 7. 9.31 remaining in the third quarter of play. Mike Morgan, Jay Walker with you. And the man between us, a Hall of Famer and a former Wildcat. You'll remember him for all those. Great moments and years with the Miami Dolphins. Larry Little joining us. Larry, how are you? I'm doing fine, man. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic. You've got to be enjoying the action thus far with your alma mater. Well, I wanted to see a better game than what I'm seeing, but uh, so far they look very good. Like it was a real all, all in football team on both sides of the ball. How special was last season for the Bill Cookman football? It was something special because of what they did. They were number one in the nation at the end of the year, made them to the playoffs on the Jenkins first year. And uh, I think they're on the right track now to keep on moving up, getting better. David Blackwell is now in at quarterback for Bethune Cookman. Another big run of 19 yards. Very little. Our guest uh, watching the ball game and enjoying really the, the festivities. Uh, really, the last couple of days, you've been involved in just about everything. Yeah, we had the uh, legends dinner last night, uh, along with Nikki Giovanni, Kenny Houston, David Brewer, and Robert Porsche, and myself. We were great honor to get that legends award. And you've been honored throughout your career, obviously. You know, do any of them mean more than the other? I mean, you know, Hall of Fame or the Stop undefeated right there. seat. Hall of Fame first and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have been the undefeated season. Well, they they go together, uh, but the undefeated season was a team effort. Going to the Hall of Fame was my effort. First down and ten for Bethune Cookman. 
Hall of Famer Larry Little with us here in the booth. As the Wildcats will pick up a couple of tough yards on the ground. Larry, uh, I know that Miami Dolphins, that those teams in the 70s that you played for, it really is, is like a great fraternity. So many of those guys stay in touch with one another, have a lot of businesses down in South Florida. How often do you get to keep in touch with those guys? Well, I see them quite often. Uh, we do, go have a lot of fairs together and go to different places together. Uh, we play golf together a lot of times. I, I have a golf tournament where a lot of guys come play in that. So uh, we have a great time together and we live in the movies. And I've always wanted to know this. Had you all won the Super Bowl but lost the game during the year at all, you think that group would be as tight as you are now? I believe so because we were always a coach in the team. And, uh, you know, see what people talk about that undefeated season a lot. But what people don't talk about and they don't realize we only lost two games in two years. The next year we were 15 and 2 and won the Super Bowl. So we were the only team in history. We have a chop block on the offense, number 77, number 69, 15 yard penalty, replay second down. Jackie Hoffman on the penalty. To lose two games in two years, I think that was amazing. Now, every year you see it on ESPN when the last undefeated team goes down, you hear the sound <laughs> effect of of popping open the, the <laughs> bottle of champagne. What do you do individually when that happens? Uh, just put a big smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you root, you guys root for uh, for teams to lose. Once no, they we start don't. getting we don't, close, we don't I think you teams. do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't root for teams to lose. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, I have a lot of respect for what New England did the other year because they did go for it. Where when the coach shut it down two years ago, I lost some respect for that. Well, Larry, we certainly uh, have plenty of respect for, for what you've done over the years. A terrific career. We know you're heavily involved still with the Bethune-Cookman program, and we thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me, man. All right, Larry Little, the Hall of Famer, right. joining us here in the booth and enjoying his Wildcats, a 49-7 lead right now over Prairie View A&M. He's in good shape, too. Looks like he can still pull around that corner. Oh, no doubt. And do some blocking. Get Zonka and kick behind him. He'll be fine. <laughs> Game has gotten a little bit sloppy here. A lot of penalty flags on this drive. Been a long day at the office for that man. Ishma Northern, the head coach of Prairie View A&M. He talked about it with us earlier in the week. Yeah. Illegal formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Coach Northern talking about how the fact that you know Prairie View has, has never been on ESPN. He said, I, I'm going to tell my wife I'm going to tell my family I'm going to tell my friends and he said I I don't want to have to tell anybody that we lost that game so it would be third down it's awfully important to him for obvious reasons and you know right now his squad has been humbled a bit yeah I mean and this is his head coaching debut you know think about this you wait so long to have your opportunity to have your own football team and your first games on national television big audience watching expectations are high at the program you can see why he was really set on trying to come out and give a great effort in this game and try and get the victory. Things haven't gone his way, but, you know, I always say it's way too early to judge a coach by just one game in the season. This is third down and 22. Five-man rush for the Panthers, and they finally get to him. David Blackwell goes down in a sea of gray and purple. Well, Larry Little, who we just spoke with earlier, being honored earlier this weekend, the Hall of Famer, playing from 1964 to 1967 with Bethune Cookman, and of course, a Hall of Fame career with the Miami Dolphins. And uh, gracious with his time today. And like you said, Jay, Larry looks like he could still pancake a few guys. Yeah, very active. And I think the golf game must be nice, too. He talked about his golf tournament. And you know, many people don't know that he actually went back to coach at his alma mater for a couple seasons in the early 90s. He was the head football coach at what was then Bethune Cookman College. Since then they've gone on to become Bethune Cookman University. We take another look at this sack. And it's fourth down and extremely long. And they're reviewing the down which uh, by all accounts, by our ledger, is fourth down, and we can get ready to play some more football and punt it away. By the way, 
while we have a moment, you know, we, we talked about Larry Little in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Eric Weems and Nick Collins of Bethune-Cookman last year making the Pro Bowl. Yes. You know, Weems was one of these little A-back receivers for Bethune-Cookman and went on to the NFL, got his niche with the Falcons last year on special teams. The Falcons confirmed on the field and will be pulled down. Now becoming a target for Matt Ryan, Nick Collins, safety for the Green Bay Packers, of course. They got a Super Bowl and Rasheem Mathis had always been the one everybody talked about for years. It's the second guy right there, Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback, went to the Pro Bowl. Didn't make it last year, but he's been the consecutive Pro Bowls prior to that. And in the spirit of fair time, Prairie View has a Hall of Famer of their own and Kenny Houston, a longtime free safety. We'll take a timeout here. 6.52 remaining. It's Bethune Cookman on top, 49-7. The 2011 MEAC SWAC Challenge, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Beautiful sights of Lake Eola, located downtown Orlando, not too far from Church Street. We are at the Citrus Bowl. Been a fun weekend thus far. MEAC SWAC Challenge, Bethune Cookman and Prairie View AM. Lop side of the fair, 49 to 7, and a new quarterback for the Panthers. That is Jerry Lovelock. He is a freshman out of Baltimore, Maryland. And you want to talk about some pressure? You come into a game, all you got to do is rally the troops from 42 behind. Jay, no big deal, right? You come in there and hopefully get a chance to make some throws, and you're competing for down the road. This is a guy who has tremendous upside from Baltimore, Maryland. Went to Edmondson West Side High School, well coached. He's been around the program for a year. And now this is an opportunity to finally get on the field and play. You gotta like the size. He brings that to the table at six feet five inches, 200 pounds. He can run, he can throw. Groover picks up six yards. It'll be second down and four as you see Jonathan Trost. It was a tough day for the senior out of Pasadena, California. He struggled early, looked a little bit nervous early on and just could never get into a flow. Pass ball is incomplete, intended for Spencer Nelson. The numbers on Trost, not very impressive. The turnovers, the one that really haunted him here today was inaccurate with his throws. And you could tell early on, Jay, he was just missing on little dump down throws. These weren't very difficult passes, but I think for that young man, better days are ahead. He'll calm down. Yeah, you've you got to believe that. You want to believe that if you're a fan of Prairie View A&M. Why, why receivers were open. They just really struggled to get the ball to the open receiver. More trouble here. Running for his life is Barrick. Second time he's had to do that today. It's going to be returned at the 33. And a rather wild and wacky play comes to a conclusion after a 36-yard punt. We'll step aside. But there Cookman on top, 49-7. A special ESPN Monday Night Football doubleheader, September 12th. Walt Disney World Resort is proud to motivate and empower our youth as they begin their journey to a future full of endless possibilities. Disney's... The marching storm of Bethune-Cookman. Plenty to celebrate thus far as Bethune-Cookman leading Prairie View A&M by a score of 49-7. to It's the seventh annual MEAC SWAC Challenge. The Miak came in dominating this event, leading four to two, and right now they're in good shape to make it five to two. Swing pass in the flat, completed to Lament. But good defense there by Perry View A&M. A lot of offense today for That's Brian Jenkins and company, but they're used to that. Last season, if you can believe it, they scored ten touchdowns in a game three times now by my quick math that's 70 points or more that's uh, some serious offense and that's why they were one of the best offenses in all the country put that on top of the fact that they don't turn the ball over they create turnovers very easy to understand why this is a very feared offensive unit second and 12 the pass falls incomplete last year they were number one in the nation in turnover margin plus 27 i'll never get used to that number it's <laughs> unbelievable number two in the nation in scoring and number four in the nation in passing efficiency 
Uh, their scoring defense was 15th. Their rushing yards were 13th. I mean, they pretty much did it all last season. And the question was, with a lot of new personnel, would they be able to repeat that performance? Well, so far, so good. And I think the test for them will come early in the season. Uh, next Saturday, they're playing South Carolina State, the team that people feel would dethrone them in the MEAC conference. So, Buddy Pugh will have the Bulldogs ready to see if the Wildcats are truly as dominating as they look tonight right now. Pass intended for Jared Mitchell, a junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. And Bethune Cookman will have to punt it away. Brian Jenkins, MEAC Coach of the Year last season. He came from Rutgers where he was the wide receivers coach. He was a standout kick returner with the Cincinnati Bearcats. Set all kinds of school records at Cincinnati. Nelson will have no shot at this one. Here. Zip will roll dead at the 24-yard line. 45-yard punt. Let's check out some news and notes from the SWAC conference. Doug Williams returning his second tenure at Grambling State. Melvin Spears to Alcorn State, returning to his alma mater. And Jackson State and Southern ineligible this, this season for the conference championship. Yeah, I mean, and those are those are interesting stories. Doug Williams coming back to black college football, always a, something to get excited about. Melvin Spears, who coached with Doug Williams at Grambling for so many years, is going back to his alma mater. The unfortunate thing about Jack State Southern having being an eligible conference championship, the best player in the SWAC conference is plays for Jackson State, Casey Theriel, their quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in America. We'll see him this upcoming season on ESPNU, but he can really throw it, but gets thrown it for not because they won't be able mm -hmm. to participate in the SWAC championship. But a lot of people think they have the best team in the SWAC. You know, Give you something else. You know the starting quarterback for Grambling, Grambling State's going to be this year? Who's that, Jay? Doug Williams. Junior. Junior. Yes. I DJ did not know that. Starting quarterback for Grambling. So I don't know if it gets any better than that. You know, so now, you know, not only he's still the father, but now he's a coach. I'm assuming he's a quarterback. He's a quarterback. Yeah. That's uh, a little bit of pressure, wouldn't you say? Just a little bit, wouldn't you? <laughs> but those shoes, those shoes aren't that big. To feel. No, of course not. I, I've been knowing DJ since he was a young boy, and he's grown up under that microscope of being Doug Williams' son his whole life, and very comfortable in it. You know, made the decision to go to Grambling when other schools wanted him. You know, if he couldn't handle the pressure, he would have gone to another school. On third and three, and. Penalty flag dropped. DeAndre Cooper says he was held and he might have a good case. So I've learned a couple of things today from you. Usually it's at least three or four. Uh, sometimes even before we make it out of the hotel. But Pass the defense. Defense. Number 25. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Good break for Prairie View A&M. Does that move the chains? Number one, of course, Doug Williams Jr. Going to be the QB as we take another look at this last play on Cooper. There's your hold. Ah, caught him with his hand in the cookie jaw. That won't make Coach Jenkins very happy. The only negative really for Bethune Cookman today has been the penalties, 11 of them, amassing over 100 yards. And back to the ground on first down. It's Fred Anderson, and he'll turn the corner and pick up. Another first down, 12 yards on the carry. The other thing that I learned, uh, I think, is, is interesting as we talk about Prairie View, and it's hard not to at least mention that infamous losing streak, is that they did not, did not have scholarships, so obviously a mitigating circumstance back in the day. A record that uh, might stand the test of time. They say records are made to be broken. I, I don't know about that one. But they've done a great job of, of bouncing back this program has. Winning a SWAC title just two years ago. Well, another reminder on Monday night on ESPN, it's an ACC football battle as Lamar Miller and Miami take on Danny O'Brien and Maryland. Will Al Golden or Randy Edsel get the win in their ACC debut college football primetime as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week on ESPN Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Nice run. And near the first down, they're not giving up. Jerry Lovelock 
trying to march his troops down into Bethune Cookman territory. You see there the left guard for Prairie View James Deacon. It's a guy they can't afford to have out. Down into pain on the field. Good run there by the freshman quarterback there, Lovelock. Finally got his jersey dirty, got to do some hitting. Deacon out of Fort Lauderdale. Again, he went to Dillard High School, the alma mater. Uh, but then Cookman head coach Brian Jenkins. And you want to talk about a football factory? Brian Jenkins, when he was at Dillard, was a teammate of Isaac Bruce. They went on to win the state title. Some other guys to play for Dillard, the Panthers. Isaac Bruce, Chris Gamble, Frank Sanders, and Lorenzo White. Played for legendary coach Otis Gray, who Brian Jenkins still talks in high regard about. The late coach Otis Gray. Nearing the three minute mark of the third quarter. And right through the hands of DeAndre Cooper. Poor lap. Poor focus right there by Cooper. That's an easy ball. Looking down the field, you've got two blockers in front of you. You've got to make that catch. But Prairie View's just having one of those days where nothing seems to go right. Can't get it going in the right direction. Second down and 10. Lovelock fires complete. Nice pass to Spencer Nelson. Deciding to move the pocket, not allowing the freshman quarterback to take any hits. Give him something around the edge where he can attack the defense instead of being attacked by the defense. And he had the composure to keep his eyes downfield and deliver a nice ball to Spencer Nelson. Quickly set for another snap on first down. And falling down is Fred Anderson. What you're seeing is not really their hurry up offense. This is what they want to run. I, I loved Coach Northern's comments to us earlier in the week. He said, you know what? Time of possession is one of the most overrated stats. I've played on teams that dominate time of possession yep. <laughs> that win two, three games. He said, we're not worried about time of possession. We're worried about points. Yes. And winning. You know, if you, some days the defense will score for you. Other days the offense will. And second down, scrambling for his life and getting good yardage right near another first for Jerry Lovelock. Good looking freshman. Yeah, and they're bringing pressure right now. Once they cross the 30 yard line, Bethune Cookman decided to get aggressive on defense and start blitzing. Well, if you're going to blitz, nobody normally accounts for the quarterback. Then the quarterback becomes your number one running threat. And we've seen two successful runs by Lovelock. You see Cooper at the bottom of your screen. That's the main target usually here. Oh, some miscommunication here. Lovelock, though, has got a couple of blockers, <laughs> and he'll find the end zone. Nice job of improvising by the freshman, Jerry Lovelock, who touched the rock for eight yards. Not exactly how you draw it up, but it'll work. Yeah, he's, he's lost. They're looking for the ball, but a good job at least by the running back of realizing once he wasn't getting the ball, then he became the lead blocker. Fred Anderson went and said, follow me into the end zone. And quarterback goes in untouched. Take him any way you can get him on a day like today. Barrick, a redshirt freshman. Tacks on the extra point, and it's 49 to 14. A minute 38 remaining in the third quarter. Prairie View trying to find some positive things to build upon as we take another look at the last score. Well, everybody was just lost. Look, the middle linebackers don't know where to go. They're following their keys. It says a running play to the right. Quarterback keeps it to the left. So let me ask you this, Mike. How, how was halftime? <laughs> you saw Prairie View. You saw Bethune Cook. Right. What'd you think? You're going you're gonna to be brave enough to declare who won the battle of the band at halftime? You know, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of enemies if I if I make a decision on that. I'll say this, Bethune Cookman, just like they have held their own in the game, they held their own in the battle of the bands. Yeah, that's a pretty good band. Yeah, um, that, that's a pretty good band. Uh, I will tell you, I was pleasantly surprised that Premier and the band came here did a good job, too. A little bit better than I thought it would be. Let's listen in a little bit on the band's first, the pride of. There's the marching storm of Prairie View.
Now, did you count up how many tuba players they have? Yes. 20. So they're trailing in the tuba department. Trailing in the tuba department. They had 20. 29 is a lot. See, I learned that again from you today. It's all about how many tuba players can you stack up on the depth chart? That's going to give you an edge. Yeah. We're, we're call it count the bling. If you can count the bling, you kind of can tell. A uh, good scoring drive for Prairie View A&M. Lovelock, the seven-yard touchdown run, ten plays, 76 yards. And again, a, a little bit of a, a boost of confidence, perhaps, for this team. At, at this point, Jay, you're not necessarily playing the scoreboard. You want something to build upon for week two, right? Yeah. I mean, although this is this Max Wack is great for conference pride, you know, you still want to go out and have a great conference season. And I think right now. Prairie View is looking for who's that spark? Who's going to be the ones that can get us? We can count on throughout the regular season. And, you know, and that's one man they can count on. Adrian Hamilton, that bookend they've got. Grown man playing the defensive end position. He knows how to punish quarterbacks. And this is what you're looking for. You know, where's the fight? You know, this game, chances are you're not going to get back into it. But who's going to go out there and make some plays when needed? And that's what they're doing right now. Ultimately, for Prairie View, they got to answer that quarterback question. I mean, the next week, do you start Trost again, give him another chance, or is it time to make a change? Lovelock certainly trying to make a case for himself. Second down and 17, and again, great pursuit. Lavette buried in the backfield by Elton Holmes. And I will say this: when it comes to quarterback controversies, normally, if it's close between the, the senior and the freshman. Mm -hmm. Tie goes to the freshman. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got longer to keep him with your program, so Trotsky have a very difficult job keeping his quarterback job. But if he can rebound nicely and get a chance, he's got to make the most of it. I think he's got limited opportunities to keep his starting position. Bethune Cookman has not faced many of these. Third and 17. And out of bounds is David Blackwell. And this is how the game of football is so funny. Coming into this game, when it came to quarterback talk, what was all the quarterback talk about? Who was going to start for Bethune Cookman? Oh, sure. They didn't make up their mind. They had, was it four? Four people competing for that starting job? Well, Brian Jenkins told us he was waiting for some divine intervention. Uh, unfortunately for us, trying to compile it too deep, that didn't come until shortly before kickoff. But obviously, uh, here on a Sunday, it, a good decision was made. Ellis on the return. And he was ragdolled behind the 30. And the third quarter comes to a close. Fourth quarter action from Orlando coming your way with Bethune Cookman on top, 49 to 14. ESPN College Football Primetime, Miami, Maryland, Monday at 8 on ESPN. This is a breakthrough. It's a magnet. Our score as we get you set for the fourth quarter here from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Mike Morgan, Jay Walker, the seventh annual MEAC SWAC Challenge, which has been dominated so far by Bethune Cookman. Panthers, almost another turnover. They've had five today. As we look at our game summary, that has been the number that has certainly stood out. The turnovers for the Panthers and how about the day by Robinson didn't know he was going to start until moments before the game and look at those numbers yeah, for somebody that just got to campus there during camp he's really grasped this offense done a good job with it and 251 yards and basically one half of football showing that he's in control of the offense Lovelock out of the gun and that ball deflected at the line of scrimmage Lovelock goes 6 5 but Jerome Culp saw that one and knocked it away. Looks as if Bethune Cookman is warming up yet another quarterback. That would be Jackie Wilson. Jackie started a couple games for the Wildcats last season. Wonder if he'll get his opportunity to play today. Yeah, he actually started their playoff game. A loss against New Hampshire. 
Pass over the middle. Nice grab. Did he hold on long enough? No, he didn't. Spencer Nelson had it in his hands and it slipped out. And there's a look at Jackie Wilson. He's the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. We thought he would likely be the starter, but Coach Brian Jenkins saying, nope, I'm going to give the Maryland transfer a shot, and Jamar Robinson turns out to be a great choice. Yeah, and Jackie Wilson has some experience with the injury to Matt Johnson that was sustained in the last game of the season versus Florida A&M. Jackie was called upon to start, get your first start against a playoff caliber team in New Hampshire. Didn't go too well for him that day. The rugby punt rolls for 50 yards without a return. It's a 49-14 lead for Bethune-Cookman back in just a moment. We're celebrating family togetherness here at Walt Disney World. I had no idea that Walt Disney World has four theme parks, two water parks, over 20 resorts, and much more. We started our day at the Magic Kingdom. Alligator below his chin. Are you kidding me? Is he okay? That's a very hazardous occupation, to say the least. I'm hoping that was the last action we saw out of that shot. There's not a second chapter. As Jonathan Moman gets his first carry. Jackie Wilson now in the game for Bethune-Cookman. Of course, Bethune-Cookman, the defending champions in the MEAC. A playoff appearance last season, their first MEAC title in seven years. Play goes nowhere as they go back to the ground. Jonathan Moment once again, as you see the new quarterback, Jackie Wilson, the sophomore, the numbers last year. He had a couple of starts, three touchdowns, two picks. Completion percentage, obviously, not where you want it to be. And right now, he's going to have one heck of a battle against Jamar Robinson, who looked outstanding today. Jamar Robinson really was the story for the Bethune Cookman offense. Very accurate with his throws and very dangerous with his legs. Third down and three. Panthers rush four. Back to the ground and stacked up shy of the marker. Very few should get it back. One of the things we talked about is could they get a couple defensive stops? And I think if you're Coach Heisman Northern from Prairie View, your defense did respond. I mean, after, you know, after the turnovers committed by the offense, the defense in the second half has come out and played very well outside of that minus that first drive that the Thune opened up with. And in fairness to his defense, they've been put behind the eight ball all day long. The turnovers, the bad field position, it's a much better unit than they've shown today. Ellis has been quiet today. Unable to field that one as it rolls out of bounds. 12.36 remaining. Bethune-Cookman still on top. 49 to 14 from Orlando. You well, sometimes when it rains, it pours. Prairie View A&M trailing 49 to 14. And their best player, Moses Ellis, limping off the field after that last play. Could be some cramps, but he was in some agonizing pain as he was on the sideline. The young man who led all of FCS in interceptions last year with eight picks. Uh, he was an All-American, played terrific. They're gonna rely heavily on him. You might even see him later in the season playing some more offense. A good athlete, gotta find a way to get him the football if that's your best football player. And I think you know, one of the things that you know, has been kind of lost in this is the strength of this Prairie View team was supposed to be their defense. Coming into the year, you got Moses Ellis coming back. But through injury, the weakness is now the defense. You know, they've got seven, they lost seven of their top eight secondary players. That's tough to overcome. And then you say, okay, well, we can rely on our linebacking core. Then you look at the linebackers, and two of their starting linebackers aren't even playing today. That's uh, Marcus White and Chris Towson. So, you know, this has been a patchwork type of job for Heisman Northern, just getting this team able to come here and play in the football game. But for them, you know, one of the keys is they've got to get healthy. Right. You know, they're going to have to get Towson back. They're going to have to get White back. White suffered from the concussion, so you don't know what the time frame is on that. Third and two. Not much daylight there. And he's stacked up near the line. It'll be a yard short of the first down. Okay. 
Groover on the carry is sophomore. Just 5'6", 188 pounds. They've got some small backs. Prairie View A&M does. And Groover is 5'6", Anderson 5'9". Baron Perry, a freshman, goes about a buck 65. And that play is blown up. Lane with another stop. He's been busy today. How, how, how discouraging is that? Fourth and one. You know, down by 35 points and you can't pick up the first down there. Not even close. And this has been that type of dominating performance today by this Wildcat defense. So the Wildcats take over on downs. Another look at Jackie Wilson, that quarterback, in the shotgun. Kind of a weird formation along the line. A staggered look. Wilson flushed out and falls down after a gain of about a yard. Jackie Wilson on the carry. Tackle by number 91, Robert With two races left till the chase, bubble drivers Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. are battling for their postseason lives, and with $3 million on the line in the Sprint Summer Showdown, drivers will do anything to win. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta, presented by Pennzoil. Coverage beginning on ESPN tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Nothing doing on second down. Jordan on the carry sets up the third and long as the clock ticks down still over 10 minutes. It's been a long, long game and uh, even longer if you're on that sideline. It is and one person, one name we've continued to call for this Prairie View defense is Adrian Hamilton. In there on the stop on the last play and continue to keep that motor turning. That's what the NFL scouts like about him. Never gives up on plays. Third and nine. And a big time lick and he still keeps on ticking. Almost got to the marker. It's going to be close. Blaine Chappelle and Adrian Hamilton with some huge hits on the play. Big lick is right. That was a collision there. Not too often you see quarterbacks get hit like that. Good effort by Wilson to make it fourth and one. Fourth down of the yard and Bethune Cookman will go for it. Wilson gets the snap, hands it off, and that'll be a first down. Anthony Jordan picks up a couple, and the drive will continue for the Wildcats. Brian Jenkins has to be very pleased with what he has seen from his team today. And you have to wonder, even though they lost a lot from that team that won the MEAC championship a year ago maybe after this game some more people will start saying they got a good chance to repeat yeah uh, i definitely can tell you right now it wasn't a fluke uh, this is a good football team well coached very intense wilson will tuck it and run and pick up seven more tough yards as we look around the meac some news and notes we mentioned this earlier five new head coaches in the meac two teams in the Postseason, perhaps you had South Carolina State and Bethune Cookman last year, and conference expansion Savannah State and North Carolina Central. They are now official members of the MEAC conference. They've gone through that transition period and they are eligible for the championships as well. There's a big hole along the right side for Jackie Wilson, the quarterback, who drags a defender down to the five yard line. 20 yards on that carry. Well, what about expansion? You think that's a good thing for the league? I mean, geographically, I think obviously, you know, North Carolina Central was, was prime. They're right there in North Carolina, which is basically the heart of the MEAC Conference. And then you've got Savannah State just expanding the border. You need somebody to take on the Florida schools that are in the MEAC Conference. I mean, it's a pretty big coastline. You talk about going from Delaware all the way down to Florida. So they're trying to add a couple teams in between. You know, and I think five new head coaches in one conference. I mean, that's a lot of turnover.
A little bit of blood on one of the Prairie View players. First and goal from the six. Wilson hands it off. Still churning and into the end zone for a touchdown. It's Anthony Jordan. Bethune Cookman continuing to pile on the points. A chance for 56 with an extra point. This power football here. Lower the shoulder pads and take on the defender. Forward lean got him across the goal line. Penalty flag on the extra point. If you're Prairie View A&M defensively, you've got to be gassed at this point. You're gassed, you're demoralized a little bit. You put a lot of points to put up on you. And there's still seven and a half minutes of football to go. Waiting on the call on this extra point. Substitution infraction on the defense. 12 men. That turn is declined. The try is good. Another look at the eighth touchdown of the day for Bethune Cookman coming right at you. ESPN. Plenty of push ups by that unit. If you do one for every point, you're going to get one heck of a workout. Bethune Cookman leading Prairie View A&M 56 to 14. 7.30 remaining in this ball game, the seventh annual MEAC SWAC Challenge. And right now, the MEAC in prime position to improve to 5 and 2 on this yearly event here this year in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl. Here's a little trivia for you. In the history of the MEAC SWAC Challenge, how many SWAC teams have won? One, Southern. Hey, I got one. I got one. <laughs> and they've won twice. That's right. Coach Northern was hoping to change that. Of course, he's from that area, coached at Southern. There's a return, and we'll get it out to the 24-yard line as we take a look at the scoring fest today for Bethune Cookman. I mean, early on, it was Jamar Robinson getting it going, calling his own number. Showing he's in control of the offense, and they didn't account for him in the running game. He was able to make some athletic plays to get in the end zone, whether it was on the ground or putting the ball up in the air, finding the right target to go to. Jamar Robinson had a breakout performance. Robinson, our U.S. Army player of the game, 22 of 31, 251 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions, and he also ran for two touchdowns. We didn't know it was going to be... Robinson all week long we were waiting to hear from coach Brian Jenkins. He made it sound like it was a real close race. I think he was having some game Fox gamesmanship start. there. Offense number 69, five yards, still first down. I'm gonna go out on a limb, Jay, and say that he knew Jamar Robinson was gonna be the guy all week long. I believe so. You know, I almost want to say I'm not upset at Coach Jenkins about being coy about who his quarterback is going to be. I'm more upset about you being upset that a football coach was being coy <laughs> with the information. Swing pass out in the flat. And down to about the 26 yard line is Troy Minnick. Clock ticking down near seven minutes. Some college football on a Sunday. Last time to enjoy that for a while. We've got Coming your way on ESPN. We'll hear from Ryan Burr in a minute. On second and long, the lefty fires. And he is stacked up. Troy Minnick is. Let's find out what's going on from Ryan Burr in studio. Ryan? Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. Certainly looking forward to that. Marshall and West Virginia. Great in-state rivalry. And a new era in Mountaineer football. Incomplete pass right through the hands of number 85. That is George Moore the third. And I think those are getting ready for the upcoming college football season. Some of the storylines, you know, we've been promoing Miami and Maryland all season. Which Miami team is going to do? You know, when you get those type of circumstances, I've seen it either completely tear a program apart or 
the team will embrace it and make them a lot stronger, a lot better. LSU seemed to handle the adversity very well last night in their defeat of Oregon. Miami, I'm sure, trying to do some of the same for Coach Golden, trying to unite the troops behind him. I know one thing, those are two good coaches that did a two, two great jobs with their previous stints. 56-14, 602 remaining from Orlando. Sweet. Bethune Cookman with the football, leading at 56 to 14, propelled in large part to five takeaways, zero giveaways. Team that was number one in turnover margin last year, getting off to a great start this year. Not much running room after the catch on first down for Randy James, the tight end. Well, Jay, if you're Prairie View A&M and your coach Northern, what do you tell your team to regroup and get ready for week two? Well, you go back, and that's what film studies for I me. Mean, there are a couple key plays away from making this game a little bit closer than it was. I mean, obviously, I think the biggest one was when Cooper fumbled the ball. They were down by 14, and they needed one yard, and the wide receiver fumbled trying to get that additional yard. You know, things like that, and, and ball protection. You know, I don't care who you're playing. If you turn the ball over five times, you're going to lose 90% of the time. Fourth start, offense, number 78, five yards, still second down. As we look at Prairie View's upcoming schedule, tough one on the road at Texas Southern. Then Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Mississippi Valley State, and Grambling State all home games, but they're going to spend a lot of time away from home this year. Yeah, you know, that game against Texas Southern, that's their rival. The little in-state rival there in Texas Southern coming off a championship season from 2010. So it doesn't get any easier for them. They've actually got eight of their 11 games away from campus, so they'll be living out of a suitcase for a while. We're coming to you live from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Mike Morgan, Jay Walker, glad to be with you. The seventh annual MEAC SWAC Challenge, 56 to 14. Our score, it's been all Bethune Cookman. And don't forget, coming up next, Marshall and West Virginia. 24th ranked Mountaineers taking on Marshall. Kickoff scheduled for 336. So keep it right here on ESPN and catch more of the action. Great weekend in college football continues with that ball game. And then, of course, the big one on Monday. Maryland and Miami. Third and 14. And that one almost picked off. Well, that's a good way to put your wide receiver in the hospital. Dangerous throw to Jameel McLeod. Yeah, he made up his mind where he was going with the football. Defense clearly had the wide receiver covered. But Wilson was determined that's where he was going with the ball ahead of time. Very lucky it wasn't intercepted, too. If the wide receiver got up and didn't get injured on the play. You know, kind of a subplot. We talked about it early. The fact that Bethune Cookman lost their coordinator last year. How about the job of Rob Spence today? There's another turnover. Fumbled by Spencer Nelson, and that is number six. A half a dozen giveaways by Prairie View AM. Oh. AL Central rivals battle as Paul Canerco and the White Sox look to make ground in the division when they take on Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers. It's the White Sox and the Tigers on ESPN2 Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell as part of the Hunt for October tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So let me give you an opportunity to, to attract something. Earlier when we were talking, you know, you saw that plus seven turnover margin. We said, you think they'll be able to do that, to replicate that again? Right. And I think we both kind of agreed, no, that won't happen. That was just one time thing. Well, now they're starting off the season plus six. That's remarkable. I mean, plus 27 is a number I've never seen at any level for, for an entire season. But the way they started this game off, who knows? They might go for plus 30 this year. They've got some room. You know, and that's something with turnover. That's something that has to be instilled in your program that stuff when you're practicing you've got guys that are stripping balls away and that's something that I've normally seen the teams that have intense coaches like Brian Jenkins and the intense type of practices those are the teams that generally force turnovers they know how to protect it because they go at it so hard in practice it's not a fluke when you rack up that kind of number tough run by Levette the junior 
Finally brought down by Marcus Davis. Missed tackles are going to show up a lot on the Prairie View A&M film this week. Bethune Cookman trying to reach 500 total yards. Now from that picture right there, can, can you tell he's winning or losing this game? <laughs> no, you can't tell. Same face. I mean, you would think he was on the opposite side of that 56-14 score. First and 10. Run to the right side, still on his feet and stepping out of bounds at the eight yard line is moment. Again, coming up next, Marshall taking on West Virginia, 336 kickoff. On second down and three. They're over the middle and in and out of the hands. Almost another touchdown. As intended for number 89, Joe O'Gordon. Bethune Cookman trying to hang another six on the board. If they do, it would give them 500 total yards. This is already the highest scoring game in MEAC SWAC challenge history, and it would be the uh, Largest margin of victory as well. Most of these games have been very close over the years. Some more tough running by Jonathan Moment, who plows ahead to the three. Moment's a nice change of pace back, but normally you think of a change of pace back, you think of somebody coming off the backfield, scat back. Well, for the Phil Cookman, their change of pace back is the power runner, Jonathan Moment. I'd like to let him run in between the tackles. He's a bruising running back for them. Another tough run by a moment. And that clock can't reach triple zero soon enough for that man. Better days ahead. For Coach Northern. And I don't think Bethune Cookman's going to call off the dogs. On second and goal. And moment tripped up at the backfield. Nice play by Adrian Hamilton. He has easily been a bright spot for this Prairie View defense. Yeah, he's that engine there with the linebacking core being decimated. They have been in camp for Prairie View and m Adrian Hamilton came out and he played his football game. He just didn't get much help by way of his supporting cast. Third down and goal. Right side. Touchdown. Ooh. Anthony Jordan. Not going to make many friends. Scoring a touchdown with less than a minute to go. Up by 40 points. Yep. Some people would definitely with would object with that move. There's no question about that. Extra point splits the uprights, and it is now 63 to 14. Brian Jenkins in his second year, coach of the year last year in the MEAC, came from Rutgers, where he was the wide receivers coach under Coach Shiano, and Obviously has uh, made an immediate impact. This is what he'll be looking at schedule wise big one next week Jay Yeah, I mean we'll be able to see how good this team is they're taking on South Carolina State different ball game Buddy Pugh will have them ready to play then Hampton Which is a team that I'd say could be one of the sleepers in the conference So early in the year we'll know exactly how good this team is then they go to University of Miami and play the U and then kind of get on cruise control, but it's always comes down to November 19 keep in mind the last regular season loss they had was at the hands of the Rattlers of Florida A&M here in this same stadium. And Joe Taylor and the boys down in Tallahassee, they're not intimidated by 63 points being put up on Prairie View. Going to be a heck of a race this year in the MEAC. 
And as great as their season was last year, there was a three-way tie. And Florida A&M beat Bethune-Cookman the last regular season game, forced a three-way tie between Florida A&M, Bethune-Cookman, and South Carolina State. Bethune held the tie break edge on all those schools. They got the postseason bid, and with the NCAA expanding the FCS playoff from 16 to 20 teams, South Carolina State was able to get that second bid. Anderson on the return, and it's strung out at the 25. While we have a moment, just want to say again that thanks to everybody at Disney and ESPN doing such a great job putting on this event, not just the game itself, but the, the two days leading up to it. Uh, a great time for everybody involved. Always fun to be here, and uh, we've certainly thoroughly enjoyed it. Obviously, Bethune-Cookman has enjoyed it as well, and, and this event just continues to pick up steam year by year. Yeah, quality, quality. Bringing back some of the legends, and Kenny Houston was walking around shaking hands to everybody, the Hall of Famer from Prairie View. We saw Larry Little and Robert Porsche, who I played against when I was at Howard. Him walking around, he gave a phenomenal speech to motivate the kids. So it's definitely more than just a football game. It's starting to become a ritual. Final play or two of the ball game here. Prairie View A&M will regroup and get ready for another game and a whistle blown. Delay a game, offense, number 14, five yard penalty, still first down. Hard to describe that one. There's the trophy. And they're gonna be bringing it back to Daytona. First time either one of these teams have participated in this event. And for Bethune Cookman, they'll get to hold on to that trophy for a year. And start off the season 1 0, an impressive victory here today. 63 to 14, the most lopsided victory in the history of this seven year event. I just saw Coach Northern talking to his team on the sideline, and they were not good words coming out of his mouth. There was a plan. I think he's. Thoroughly upset, not only the performance, but maybe you know the, the touchdown score at the end of the game. He's got a he's an easy going guy, but he's got an intense look on his face. I think if I'm a player, I'm sitting in the back of the plane. I don't want to be near the front. Lock ticking away and how tough is it for you to swallow that? You're on offense, you're down. You've got to be the one to take the knee as opposed to the other team that's right. up by so many points taking the knee. Well, better days ahead for Prairie View A&M, no doubt about it. They've got to figure out who their quarterback is and continue to gel offensively with a lot of newcomers at these skilled positions. New scheme, new coordinator, new guys. And the clock will tick down. And Brian Jenkins will have the victory and a little bit of ice on him as well. Our final score from Orlando, Bethune Cookman wins it 63 to 14. This has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN. Let's now send you out to Morgantown, West Virginia.